From the cradle to the grave, life is tough. From the beginning to the end, the road is rough. But there's something you should always keep in mind. Take comfort in what comfort you can find. Oh, life for that passion I couldn't bear. Glasgow Celtic's my passion, I declare. And for this, I make no apology. For it's always been Celtic for me. I would sell mix the horses, I've no doubt. With others, it's the whiskey and the stout. With some, it's every pretty girl they see. Well, it's always been Celtic with me. Others, people now say that I'm insane. Just because I've never missed a game. Be it wind or rain or hail or sleet or ice. I've yet to miss a game at paradise. And all the money that I've spent going abroad. All the money that I never could afford. Well, I spent it all. It's always been Celtic with me. Hello and welcome to the live Homeboys podcast and phone and show. My name's David Harper, sitting on the banks of the Boyne, still waiting on that rematch. Um, Eamon Doyle, you're just going to have to hang on a minute, son. We're just starting the show. Uh, somebody try to call in right away there, a wee bit quick off the mark. Um, you obviously can tell I'm not. Joe McKenna, uh, he's away with a family up in Donegal, enjoying himself. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'll deal with this, this call here. Eamon. Hello. We're just, we're just starting up, man. Is that you, Johnny? No, it's Eamon Doyle. Listen, no. I mean, I'm, I'm new to this kind of carry-on, so you need to bear with me if I've caused you some problems ringing in a couple of times. I'm just, no. We're just basically just doing the intro the night, Eamon, but stay on the line there, man. Don't okay. go anywhere, right? So as I was saying, Joe's away with the family. Uh, Paul Larkin, we've not got him tonight either. He's he's actually in Ireland as we speak. He's on a week's jolly to see his, see his boy and stuff like that. So, but of course, the man you can depend on. I mean, he's he's there every single week, rain, sleet, or snow. He's here to to, to man the barricades. Unless I'm sleeping. <laughs> Unless he's sleeping, man. Well, that's that's usually the next boy shows, isn't it? Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Monday night you're usually not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said, you can hear by his uh, dulcet, wishy tones there. I'm joined by Mr. The one and only Jason Higgins. How are you, Jason? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Fantastic. Happy uh, days, man. Yep, yeah, right. Uh, 
refreshed uh, first game of the season under the belt. A nice sweet victory. And, uh, yeah, happy days. Although uh, a couple of things obviously happened the day in the news we'll, and stuff like that. We'll, uh, get, to, we'll uh, get to that. Just, just we'll hang on for it. Don't yeah. get too excited. You're like aiming there, man. You're, you're a chap at the back. You're yeah. you're like, <laughs> so excited to get going, right? So just to anybody who's listening for the first time or whatever, you know, you know the rules by now. Just add homeboys on Skype. We'll accept you as a friend and you can call in and talk about whatever you want as long as it's to do with Celtic, obviously. Um, or if they don't have Skype. Aye, yes, yes. Yeah. As I say, he's gave me a chance, boys. <laughs> so, it's not like you that does it, Pete, man. <laughs> Let's try to get your own back, is that it? Aye. So, what, we, what we've actually done tonight, because uh, we know there's a few people out there who are maybe a bit technophobic sort of thing, like, you know, they, know they, they don't use Skype or they're just, it's, it's just not handy for them. They're scared for it. They're scared for it. But anyway, we've added, we've added a telephone number. So it's a Glasgow, uh, what you call it? No sort code. What is it? Dialing code, whatever. Right. So it's 0141 3567 327. Right. 0141 3567 327. So obviously to anybody in the UK, that's just going to cost you whatever it would cost you to phone a Glasgow landline. Not a penny more, not a penny less. If you have free calls to the UK landlines after 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock at night, that's going to be a free phone call for you. It's not a, it's not a, a premium number or anything like that. So once again, the number is 0141 356 7327. So, as we say, this is, a, this is the homeboys phoning show. And straight off the mark, we've got a call right away. So, Eamon, we'll hand over to you, man. What was it you, you wanted to talk about? Hey, well, to be honest, I, I, I've picked up on this coming through. Uh, I picked it up from Celtic Minded, and for some time I've been meaning to join in and join in some of these homeboys things. Uh, so it was really just to, to join in and, and chat about it. But obviously, the big thing that's breaking just, just now is around what's happening with the Green Brigade. Uh, I don't know, I take it everybody's familiar with the sort of statement that's come out from the club today. Yeah. Yep. So, what's, what's your views on it, Eamon, yourself? Well, I think it's a bit sad that at a time when we should be getting plenty of fun watching our city dwellers on the other side of the city self-employed, that, that this is the moment that we choose to turn on ourselves. Uh, I think it's a bit heavy-handed. Uh, my, my own personal view on it is that I don't know what's behind it. I don't know what's behind the policy with it. I've actually had a face-to-face with Peter Law and, and discussed some of this with him, this amongst other things. Uh, and I, I just... I, I can't see that this is the right amount of action to be taken against your own fans and there seems to be something more behind that. Uh, I think there's when men we did speak to him, it wasn't just me, I was part of a group from the, the Celtic Supporters Club that spoke to him. Uh, two of us actually spoke to him and they, what appeared to be happening was there was going to be more dialogue. And I, I can't believe that anything that's going wrong just now can't be sorted out by dialogue. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely agree. But I know quite a few guys in the Green Brigade and... Celtic don't have any dialogue with them. Basically, they don't. Celtic don't invite them into Celtic Park. They don't really discuss anything with them. The guys can come on and correct us. That we tried to get a couple of the Green Brigade members on tonight, but they're having a meeting tonight. But Celtic don't really have any dialogue with them. Oh, well, that was the point we made to Peter Lowell at the end of last season. It was actually on the day that we won the league. We were talking to him, and uh, he, he recognised that and said that this season there would be more attempts, not just with the Green Brigade, but with all sort of uh, sections from the fans uh, to have more, more dialogue with them. Uh, now, I know from looking at websites that the Green Brigade are adamant that they, they don't have dialogue with Celtic. I just can't understand how that can be the case. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that they do. Uh, I don't understand how that's happening in this day and age. Uh, that a, a, a group like the Green Brigade, and yeah, there are problems, Yes, safety is an issue, but the overwhelming benefit they bring to the whole atmosphere at Celtic Park has got to outweigh any of the negatives. Uh, I just I can't understand why the club can't do something about that and get a more positive outcome. Just before I fling my wee tops worth in, we've been joined by another caller who has been fast off the mark as well tonight and somebody who we kind of knew would be calling in, I think. <laughs> Mr. St. Sixtus. Paul, are you there, son? Right, lads, how you doing? What's happening, man? 
Okay, let, tell me. Let's hear it. Let's tell hear us. it, Paul. Tell us. I'm absolutely. I'm gutted, man. I'm absolutely gutted. That I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Hey, can I just can I just see but see before you go off on a wee rant here, Paul? Let me just say, uh, like Eamon's put his point across as well, right? So let, let me just say, Celtics have released a statement here, and it's a lot of uh, a lot of words. But at, at the, the final paragraph of the statement, I think it's quite important. It says, "We will be happy to continue this dialogue, and if the club were to receive assurances and safety, then we may look at this situation." At situation again in the future. However, as it stands, the club categorically but regrettably has no choice but to take this action. Now, to my point of view, Celtic, they say we'll be happy to continue this dialogue. There only was one bit of dialogue and that was John Paul Taylor telling the Green Brigade today their seats were getting cancelled or, or they were getting moved to another area. So there hasn't been any dialogue. So if Celtic are saying they're going to continue, I'd, I'd like to see what they're continuing. But as the point, the point as well, Jason, is that they, they didn't really tell John Paul Taylor, didn't they tell him? I think he told, told a few of them by email this morning. Aye, well, I got a text. I got a text today at one o'clock. Uh, tell me. There's uh, some text done. Uh, it's not been made public yet, so don't post it online. Obviously, they were trying to do a bit of negotiating and it's not up to it. But to me, this is... I'll be honest with you, right? Cut through the bullshit. To me, this has got nothing to do with health and safety. This is the day where a group of political, politically motivated people that they don't want, they don't want to be told how to think. It's always been the same. Stevie Kearney, I said it last week. Stevie Kearney was only here and told us last year, last season, eh, what Lawwell said and what was said amongst in the higher echelons of Celtic Park. And this yep. is <sighs> these people are my mates. These people are my mates. I've been on the phone to boys day in tears. What I mean, it's not right, man. It's not right. Right, it isn't right. Um, I totally agree with you, right? But right, here's here's the other side of the coin, right? So what they're talking about is overcrowding, motion, body surfing, lateral movement, and broken seats. See if the Green Brigade stop all that, then Celtic haven't got a leg to stand on. We're slating them. So why don't they just what what does lateral see lateral movement? What do they need to do for? Why does the whole place do the huddle? That's lateral movement. No, no, I get, I get that. I, I, I would let them do oh, yeah. it. You know, it's not me that's saying this, but I've certainly why be pedantic about it. Why can they not? I know it's like one minute you'll tell us today, the next minute it'll be something else. But uh, that's the point, Jason. That's the point, Jason. As I said to you last week when I came on, it's nothing. It's nothing today. But, sorry, somebody's. I'm at the back. Somebody's got their head cutter on. Right, right. <laughs> this is this isn't today. We lateral movement. Our flags are. I agree with you. I agree. They, 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 see see the problem, them. though, Paul. Right. All wants rid of the Green Brigade, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. See, oh, see. Is, it, is it Peter Lowell? I'm not sure it is. Uh, there's yeah, certainly You can only take people as, as you find them, and, and why would he? Why would you want rid of a group that's bringing uh, the benefits that the Green Brigade bring? I mean, if you, I'm sure we were all there for the 125th night against Barcelona. Anybody who was there will never forget it. Why would you want rid of a group that brings that to the ground? You know, I'm sure that there are season tickets. There's been guys on, I happen to pick up a bit. Forgive me, I'll, I'll out myself as I listened to a bit of Clyde earlier just to hear their pain. There was folk talking about it. There are people who buy tickets specifically because they want to be beside the Green Brigade. You know, yeah. so they're, they're actually filling up Celtic Park. Just from the business point of view, why would Peter Lowell want rid of the Green Brigade? And I, when I think back to when I met him, he actually said that. They put them in there. Why would they want rid of them? Okay, I think so a wee, uh, and, and sadly, I think there's something a bit more sinister behind that. I don't know what it is. Don't pretend to know so, what it so, is. So, Eamon, right, okay, we say, why would they want rid of the Green Brigade, right? So why did Celtic not talk to them? See, so Peter, 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 yeah, Peter Law is the chief exec, so if you want something to remain in your stadium, they bring you a lot of revenue and they're well loved by the vast majority of the support, which I would say. And they're causing you a bit of trouble. Would you not invite a couple of them in and have a talk with them and say, "Look, Absolutely. boys, can we sort this out?" Absolutely. So, so is is Peter Law just is he guilty of gross incompetence in his job? Because there, 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 there can't be there can't be two sides to the story. There's got to be one side to a story. And the thing is that they, they don't meet the Green Brigade. They don't talk to them. 
and yet they banned them for the stadium. Okay, they, they announced or they, they issue these statements and the Green Brigade issue statements and the Trust issue statements and their statements come out every day's year. It's the, the people's front of Judea. Exactly. But the death, ball, death by statement. Aye, exactly. But can we not just be adults with us and get round a table and discuss? Because the Green Brigade only exists because Celtic, you know. So Celtic, they're the custodi- the PLC are the custodians that look after everything we all love. So this is the thing that brings us all together. So we're not we don't go to Celtic Park because of the Green Brigade. We don't go to Celtic Park because of Peter Lowell. We don't go to Celtic Park because of Neil Lennon. We go to Celtic Park because of Celtic FC. The eleven guys wearing those jerseys. No, the people inside the jerseys. It's actually the jerseys we go to support. So that's the. That's the common denominator for us all. So if you've got something within your business that's very valuable to you, but they're causing you a bit of trouble, would you no bloody talk to them? Well, Jason, I'd, I'd like just... to. Jason, I'd like to. What Paul mentioned there, right? I think a lot of people are forgetting the stuff, the revelations that were on this show with Stephen exactly. King last season, right? Um, I think there is an agenda within the club against the Green Brigade, but Absolutely. at the same at the same time, the Green Brigade need to realise that. They're losing a lot of support for ordinary punters. There's a there's a tide gone now because the thing is the club the, the thing the clubs are coming out with is genuine health and safety rules of Glasgow City Council. You go and buy a ticket for a concert and it'll say on that ticket you can be ejected for the gig for motion for crowd surfing all that kind of stuff, right? Now I understand that this is probably something petty, but it's the something that it's something the club can genuinely fall back on, and a lot of ordinary fans will say. Well, they're, they're well within the rights here, right? And I understand the point of view of them. What will it be next? But the thing is... The only thing I'd say about that... Wait, no, wait, let me finish. I'm sorry. sorry. See, on, see, sorry. see when you say, what will it be next? If it becomes then, or you can't have a banner, you can't have the supporters club banners, and you can't have the songs, that's a different story. That's when you'll utilise the support will come back together because we'll not be stopped for doing stuff that isn't illegal, that isn't outside the rules. Yeah. When, the, when the club has this thing for Glasgow City Council and it obviously must be a genuine thing because anybody could contact Glasgow City Council and ask them. Do you know what I mean? It's not like they can just put this up and it's, and it's, it's an untruth. So they, they've got to kind of box clever. I just don't understand. No, but, it's, it's perplexing. Uh, sorry, it's I mean, coming. just before we go, but see the, when you buy a ticket for Celtic Park or you buy your season ticket, on the terms of condition that clearly tells you that these things can't be done, you know, so so the Green Brigade are in breach in terms of, of the rules of the stadium and the rules of Glasgow City Council. So, to be fair, they can do as much stamping and jumping about and whatever, gnashing of teeth and wailing if they want, but Celtic's in the right here. If we, no, it's not, this isn't my viewpoint, this is just a fact that Celtic say. are, they're not breaking any rules by enforcing this. If I was 19 or 20 year old, I'd be in the middle of that. That's all right. Yeah, on you go, Eamon. Sorry, Paul. Come back here a sec. A couple of points I was making for that, and I don't know who that was that mentioned about uh, if you buy a ticket for a concert. I, I, I actually live in uh, the, the North East and was at the Bruce Springsteen gig down here and dropped my lads off to go to see Coldplay. And if you witness, because I'm not a concert goer, if you witness the way the people behave going to and from concerts and the way that the crowd's controlled there, it was absolutely pandemonium. It would make anything that happens in the Green Brigade section look like a picnic. It really would. So, you know, it's a good comparison to say, you know, if you buy a ticket for a concert, you go and watch this the way that the police actually police concert goers and they get away, you know, the drunkenness is, is marvellous. <laughs> they get away maybe a hundred times more than football fans would. The only other point I would make, and this is where, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, as an observer and probably from a political point of view, absolutely support the Green Brigade. But I think where they've lost the support of, uh, of a lot of people is around Pyro uh, and, and bringing things like fireworks into football grounds. They just, maybe it's because of the age I'm, maybe I'm too old. It's just not for me. You don't bring flares and smoke into a place where there's a, a crowded crowds of people. Uh, and I think that's maybe where they've leaked some support amongst the, the, the main support in, in Celtic Park. Yeah, and I think that is an issue that Celtic are right to pick up. But then again, that, that's what makes me... There's a cynic in me says there seems to be another agenda because at the same time as they're going on about disabled people, and it's probably right, disabled people eh, not being able to get away from smoke. Celtic had fireworks themselves at Celtic Park. Other people have now been pointing out. Even the main stand, even in the director's box, they're doing the huddle and jumping about, you know, and there's lateral movement there. And, you know, some of the things that are being thrown about that they don't want the Green Brigade doing, they're actually doing themselves. 
And there just seems to be the cynic in me. I don't want to be cynical about Celtic. It's probably one area in life you don't want to be cynical about. Yeah, uh, there seems to be another agenda there. I agree. I just think they're, they're just using as an excuse. I agree. Uh, so Paul, on you go, mate. The floor's yours. I'll let. Uh, obviously, you probably have a lot of calls tonight, but just before I go, I'd just like to see that. I mean, these guys are my pub. Jason, you've met you've met a few of the boys. Harper's met a few of the boys. Whatever. And these Celtics, your life. But I mean, yeah. it's it's her, her whole life. It's the focal point of her whole identity, and it just feels as if it's getting taken away from us. And it's. It's heartbreaking, it's heartbreaking, and what Eamon said there uh, is, I think, really rings true. There's, there's, de there's definitely other agendas at play here, and, and, and with the, what you were mentioning about concert tickets and all that, I mean, I go to gigs, it's, it's mental, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, there's, there's something going on, and it's, it's, they're taking that away from us, I feel, and it, it just, it's breaking my heart, man, it's breaking my heart. But what, what, what do you think about, uh, like, obviously the terms and conditions of your ticket, and actually attending a game in Scotland with Glasgow City Council laws. So, effectively, the Green Brigade are breaking the terms and conditions of the ticket, right, by doing this kind of stuff. But Eamon's pointed out they do in the director's box as well, and Celtic let off fireworks, although it's in a controlled, seemingly, environment. So, I take it for their safety certificate for that before they Can do it. smoke, though. Well, I know exactly, but I'm saying for the fireworks, I take it they might have had to have some safety certificates. I don't know. But, Paul, what do you think about the Green Brigade? They're obviously breaching these conditions by doing the lateral movement and by stuff. I just so don't accept that it's a, I don't accept that it's a problem. I just no, no, I, I agree with problem. you. I don't think it is, but it's a fact of life that it's a rule. You well, know, it is, it is a term of the ticket. That, I, that's the thing, Jason, right? Like, if that's the rules there, what, what, what's the point of doing it, man? I mean, what is the I point? I know, but I get that, but it's actually wrote on the ticket, mate. It is wrote. So see if Celtic want to be pedantic. They can be, which I think that's what they're doing. I think, I agree with what Eamon says. I think there is other agendas at play here, and they're using that as an excuse yeah. to enforce whatever. But I, it makes no sense to me, but I see why they're doing it. And the thing is, we can't complain, really, because what they're right... Well, well, yeah, well, you can say that you can say they're right. If that's they are right technically, obviously. Aye, right. it's a technicality, but, but they are right. You know, and at the end of the day, the Green Brigade have been doing the, 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 the. No, but Paul, the Green Brigade have been doing lateral movement for three years. Nobody's ever been hurt, so there isn't a safety issue there. You know, there isn't. But, oh. Aye, but, but I, I, I get, it's against the law. He's smoking the bus. They drink on the bus, whatever. I mean, we all also go and see Celtic here, there, and everywhere. We all break the law. We all do things we shouldn't be doing. But it's, it's all right, man. Just calm it. To I'm me, a, I'm I'm a, a, I know, I know it's all right. But at the end of the day, you're, you're not committing crime of the century. But it's, it's it effectively, if you go by the law of the land, it isn't all right because it's against the law. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm no advocate. But I, I don't agree with all that. But do you know what I'm meaning? I do know what you're meaning, Jason. Of course I know what you're meaning. You're, and you're right in what you're saying. But that doesn't make it. it, it you, you, you know, you just say that yourself. It's there's something more sinister. They want ready a, a politically mobile group of people that are organised that won't be told how to think, and that is what it's all about, as far as I'm concerned. I, see, I, see, I, where, I, see what though. See if they if if they just cut out this lateral movement and that right. And I didn't understand. I've never got motion or body stuff. Anyway. I, didn't I think even they've get stopped that, right? that. To be fair, but I think see, lateral movement's the only thing they're doing. See there. if the club didn't couldn't they turn to this. They would have nothing else to turn to. Do you know what I mean? Listen, just while you are there, right? Johnny's been sitting there on the line for ages, and it's no fair to have the star in the TikTok podcast sitting on the sidelines there, sitting in his dressing room, getting his, his, his powder and everything on. So, Johnny, you want to come in and give us your point of view? You've, you've heard the boys there. I'll let you go, right? And the, and all the, all the best. I just want to say, no bother, Paul. No bother, Thanks, Paul, man. Listen, always welcome, buddy. Right, well, talk to you soon. Well. Talk to you soon, comrade. How you doing, boys? All right? Right, Johnny. Hear me, aye? Aye, yeah. well, clear, man. Yeah. Is that, have, have we got your paperwork signed? Ah, uh, free transfer, eh? Free transfer, right, <laughs> for the TikTok show on at home, boys. <laughs> free money right. involved, shocking. <laughs> aye, aye I've, been, I've been listening to you. Is this lateral movement that gets me? Uh, I feel hot. Sorry for the boys. For a bit of bringing Celtic Park is uh, superb. And you're right, Jason. You're right. Oh, I'm here. It's... Simple, pure and simple. It's illegal. It's we can lose our safety certificate, which just isn't on. That's not on. 
Um, but it's this lateral movement that I, I find that uh, amazing. I mean, when Jan Venegar at Hesselink scored in the last minute again, the, the old Rangers, when that came out of it. Oh, I about five cheers. Right. Well, if, if that's no lateral movement, but that's what I was saying when, when uh, Nakamura bent the free kick in and when Tony Watt scored last year, for five minutes after that goal, if that's no lateral movement, then what? No, I mean, so I just don't understand this lateral movement. And I think that's, the main, that's their main uh, get at the, the young team. This is the one. This is the one we hear the most certainly. Ah, definitely. As Eamon pointed out, the day the huddle in the the director's yeah. box. That's so right. There's that's lateral right. movement happening there. And, and is that is that what the class is lateral movement in the huddle? No. Or is it knowing they're all moving along the the I seats think, to the I, left I, to the right? I think, I think when they do it, they they move along to the left to the right. right. But. Uh, Aye, I mean, it's, it's a lateral movement, I suppose, when we used to sing, uh, he plays on the left, he plays on the right. We were moving to the left and right there, so you're just, it was, I mean, it's totally trying to sanitise an atmosphere where it, it doesn't bring any problems or any issues, but at the end of the day, if some guys in suits have made up these laws and that's what we need to adhere to, then so be it. So, the... They need to stop doing it. I know they, I mean, they don't Jason, want to be told what to do, but... Jason, I, I was quite... I mean, I was on the show last week, right, and uh, I heard Joe talking about him. I read his article and his experience when he was in the Green Brigade, and he says he witnessed the motion that day, right? And a few guys fell over, but everybody picked him up and everything was great and that. But at the end of the day, right, that's on the same safety certificate as fireworks. You can't just decide that, that some of the safety stuff you like all right, and some of the safety stuff you like, it's no. I mean, it's all in the same certificate. Do you know what I mean? You can't just decide. That, 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 is, that is coming to outside the club, right? Whether the club are getting as forced this on them as much as they say they are, I don't know. I think they are genuinely just using this to, the, to their own means, to, to whatever end, well, to the end of getting rid of the Green Brigade, it seems so far like, but you can't just pick and choose what bit of the safety certificate you're going to adhere to or what you like. Yep. Do you know what I mean? That, that yep. is there. Don't get me wrong, if I was in my, te- I was in my teens or in my twenties, I'd be right in the middle of that. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. I've done far worse things than we all have in our life, even in yep. football stadiums, going to games, right? But at the end of the day, if that's what it is, that's what it is. We didn't really have a leg to stand on, like. And that's uh, and that's that's the point. I think that's the point Eamon was making, but it's just, there isn't really an answer here, other than, if that's the, the line that the club want to take, and the club have yeah. obviously took that line, then we need to adhere to it. Jason, uh, you hear yep. me, aye? Aye. Listen, um, I've got a mate, I don't know, wee John, do you know wee John? Have you met wee John? Wee John's in the wheelchair, obviously, he goes in every way to see Celtic, and he's got a massive problem with the Green Brigade. Now, what I think, they tried to get the, the disabled supporters a section of Celtic Park, and I think that was the section that they were planning and putting the disabled supporters in. There's a wee bit of animosity between the, the disabled fans and the Green Brigade because of this. No, I'm not sure at 100% but whether that is in their plans. Well, there's a, there's a, disabled, there's a few disabled fans listening to this show and one of them sends us regular, uh, uh, regular uh, contributions and emails and stuff like that. And he loves uh-huh. the Green Brigade. Right. And he, he always makes the point, he says, don't, don't tar us all with the same brush. He says, I love them. And he right. says, I love everything about them. So it's not a through the board. Again, it's some, they're forced. I mean, I, I know people that hate the Green Brigade. There was a guy who used to have across the road to me, he hated them. And, uh, but he was mess up. He was all informed. He used to say they sing sectarian songs. That they don't. They don't sing any sectarian songs. If you know the definition of sectarian, they are totally anti sectarian. You know, they, 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 they totally don't go into that at all. And they wouldn't join in if the. the the larger Celtic support was singing a song that had any sectarian connotations. The Green Brigade wouldn't join in on that because they are very politically motivated and they understand politics and they understand they're very they're very sort of committed to their cause and their cause is one of anti-sectarianism. You know they are they are all Republicans. They are not into the monarchy. They don't they don't adhere to sort of run of the mill sort of politics. They, they are a bit left-wing, or they're pretty radically left-wing, which I've not got a problem with. And they stand up for their beliefs. But at the end of the day, lateral movement, that's not a belief. That's just having oh. a laugh. 
So knock in the heat, guys, and uh, just bring what you do best to Celtic Park. But at the end of the day, I can't tell them what to do. I think Celtic have been totally arsy about this, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know what sort of Glasgow City Council is doing to Celtic. I don't know what this focus group are doing to Celtic. I don't know what's what's behind the scenes and what's the motivational factor for this. I don't know if it's Dermot Desmond doesn't like the Green Brigade and he's telling Peter Law you better deal with them. I don't know. I know the Green Brigade have caused them a bit of hassle with some banners, fireworks, stuff like that, and they're coming out and saying the bangers at the Cliftonville game, which I'm led to believe it was nothing to do with the Green Brigade, but by association in section 111, that's where the bangers were let off. And if that's the hangers-on that's going there to stand with the Green Brigade and they're doing it, then unfortunately the Green Brigade will carry the can for that. Jason, just to reiterate what we said earlier, right, there's Arthur Rusk in the chat room there saying, do we all forget Stevie from last year, what uh, Lowell said? And that's what saying no. And that's the kind of thing that perplexes me because if the Green Brigade really believe that Peter Lowell has it in for them and they're getting watched so closely surely this is just playing into the club's hands exactly and that's and the I, thing think, that... I think the Green Brigade do believe well I don't know I don't know but I, I think the Green Brigade must believe that Peter Lowell's got it in for them mm-hmm. I think I, well, I think I believe that as well going by the revelations that were on the show yep I do I think I something know. you said there I just want to pick up on if it's alright yep. carry yeah. on Eamon Some, something you said there around and yeah, you, you gave a good resume of what the Green Brigade are all about, and the, you know, probably to you they might seem a bit left wing. I think to some people they'll seem very left wing. Uh, I certainly agree with most of their politics, and I agree with the resume you gave of them. And I don't think we, we talked about there seems to be something else behind that. And I know it was all a bit of a joke at the time with the upside down flag, and whilst John Reid was there, they would have the flag upside down, and they actually effectively. They probably brought around the premature exit of John Green as chair, uh, uh, John Reed, sorry, John Reed as chairman, uh, and you, you've hinted at their sort of political standpoint. I don't know. Is there a bit of payback going on here? Uh, um, are, are Celtic as a club unhappy that they've got a political element uh, within the ground that they can't control, as, as the last caller said? Uh, and you know whether it be lateral movement, whether it be smoke, whether it be wrong seats. You know, there's going to be a straw. And if, it, if it's not one of those, it's going to be something else. Now, guys like John, John Reed hasn't gone away. Guys like that don't go away. Political operators like that, they don't forgive and they don't forget. <laughs> and we've got, we've got a few uh, lords now as well in the boardroom. So, aye, the, the boardroom's definitely gone away for the ethos of what the club was originally. And picking up on the political standpoint of the Green Brigade, it's nearly nailed on the same political viewpoint as I've got myself. So... At the end of the day, I've got no problems at all with what they stand up for, and uh, they stand up for the small guy. You know, they. Uh, if it wasn't, if it wasn't lateral movement, if it wasn't broken seats, if it wasn't, you know, the smoke, it would be, don't sing the boys of the old brigades. It would be, don't sing the roll of honour. You know, all that was out there before. Uh, the green brigades aren't breaking seats and doing all those things when when there seemed to be a concerted effort about misinformation around their way support as well. That's, I think there's a, I think there's something more behind that. Now, why would Celtic be taking that stance? Is there something more behind that? Is it to try and position Celtic to be in a better place to do X, Y, or Z, to move to another league, to be more palatable to other people? There might be something like that behind that, but there's definitely something there. Aye, and the, the, all the points you make, and it's all the things I've thought about as well, I mean, you know, as... Has uh, Peter Law and Dermot Desmond got an ulterior agenda to move Celtic to another league? Are they trying to make us more marketable? Are they trying to make us run of the mill? Take the edgy element away for our support? And, you know, at the end of the day, Celtic are, for, for every corner of England, apart from your neo-Nazi type support, like Chelsea, they'll have a small element of neo-Nazi support, you'll have maybe Spurs and things like that. The va- but the vast majority of football teams in England have got nothing but praise for Celtic support when we visit their city and visit their stadium. You know, because we carry ourselves well, OK, we're politically motivated, but that's not a bad thing. You know, and uh, at the end of the day, that's what Celtic are born of the Irish diaspora. So there's no way we should ever forget that. And that's, that's the way Celtic Football Club was born, and that's what Celtic means to me. And I'm certainly not ashamed of my Irish heritage. And it's a thing that I'll hold dearly. I wouldn't say I'm proud of it because it's, it was a fluke of nature, you know. It doesn't make me better than anybody else. But I'm certainly not ashamed of it. And I'm very happy that I've got Irish heritage. And 
I'll celebrate my, my Irishness and supporting Celtic is one way of that's an identity and it's an identity where me and my family came from and that's the same for many many Celtic fans out there and I know my good friend Johnny you feel exactly the same as me exactly the same mate I, uh, it's a shame this is happening it really is it's, I thought Celtic were absolutely brilliant on Saturday 10 we're all here talking about I know that's the thing that's hacking me off and I was going to praise the club because after uh-huh. the game I went round to the, the Kerrydale suite for a pint and uh, I went in the town for a meal with Lind and the kids after it she picked us up at the main at the main door and I went in there for a few pints after the game it was absolutely brilliant and you're saying this is great what Celtic's doing for the fans here now and it's taking away from the sort of corporate element and anybody with a season ticket can get in after the game music on have they stand get a few pints for your mates and then head into town or whatever and it's great and then before the I mean, we're going to get a call later on I don't want to go on about it too much but I took part in the Kano bucket collection and uh, it was nearly seven and a half grand we raised before the game and you just say to yourself how humbling it is when you realise what the Celtic support is all about and see I mean I stood for two hours with this bucket and the amount of kids coming up and putting money in it and guys £20 notes and just just the Celtic support it is like no other and the amount of money we give to charity and the amount of money that Celtic fans will just totally put into that bucket without thinking twice because they know it's gone to the Cano Foundation. And this is a charity that's run by us, by the Celtic support, by no one else, you know, and it's all it's all run by donations for the Celtic support. And that's I'm I'm really proud to be part of the Celtic support, you know, and it's it defines our identity and it's what we are. And we've got nothing to be ashamed of, nothing at all. Is it just a coincidence that I read, um, now you can correct me if this is this turns out to be a lot of crap, but I read uh, on Twitter, and I didn't even click on the headline, I just, I just, I didn't click on the link, I just read the headline that uh, Man City fans had been told that uh, they were to stop doing the Poznan. Is this, is this, I mean, did, did anybody hear about this? Which is basically the same as what we do with the huddle. I mean, I definitely think the huddle's going to be next, like. Uh, I don't I never, know, I I never, I never, I never heard that, no. Uh, I, I definitely seen the headline last week on Twitter and I seen it come up a couple of times on Celtic Minded today. Now whether, whether they've actually been thoroughly warned about it, but they've certainly been asked to stop doing it like But see instead they come out with these arsy statements that they, they that says play that's got plenty of words without actually saying anything. Why can't they not just come out and tell us that we have been warned by mm-hmm. XYZ that this will be the result of you keeping to do that? Why can you not stop doing it? Why did they not come out and say that? Well, Johnny, Johnny, correct me if I'm wrong as well. Then I think uh, on the TikTok podcast last season, uh, some of you, some of your guys were at a whatever kind of summit. Peter Lawler was there, and he specifically kept talking about the motion and the lateral movement. Because I remember BJ Mack and that talking about it in the podcast. Do you remember that? I don't think I was on that one, Harper, but I think um, was that. Uh, was that on Mendra? Uh, was, was that the? I, I can't remember, but I definitely some of your boys were in attendance at it, and they really and it, it says the thing it kept coming back to all the time with Peter Lowell was this lateral movement and motion. They were the two things he kept talking about the most, and he says this is these are the two things we need to cut right, the right, most. That's right. And BJ Max says he kept coming back to that all the time. So this isn't something new. This is I mean we've all heard about this last season as well. They want to cut out the lateral movement. And of course, it keeps continuing, keep continuing. And maybe you just think, ah, oh, well, maybe it'll be forgotten about. Just like the songs debate disappears for a while, then it comes up again, then it disappears for a while, then it comes up again. But as we know, it's keep coming back to this. We do think the club has a, has a has another agenda. We heard what Stevie said in this show, so you're just playing into their hands with this thing because he's come. They've come out and said this time and time again. The motion and lateral movement is something that's going to have to go. See, see, yeah, see this saying it and saying it time and time again, right? right. Obviously, they've not been saying it the right way. Mm-hmm. See if it was that big an issue, Harper, right? Say mm-hmm. I'm at my workplace and one of our major customers or one of our major suppliers has went and told me categorically that if my company keeps doing X, Y and Z, they'll be cutting ties with us or they'll be fining us or they'll be doing X, Y and Z, yeah. right? First thing I'm going to do is go back into the workplace, call everybody and call a general meeting and say, right, this is, a, this is in layman's terms. I've had a meeting with the guy. Mm-hmm. The guy has then told me if this keeps happening, 
that's the ramifications. So it's up to you guys now if you want to play ball or there'll be this will be with the, the result of you keeping doing what you're doing is going to be this. Yeah. Why is Peter Lowell not come out and say that in layman's terms? Why are we always dancing around about the subject? They must stop this, they must stop that. Well, they're saying we must stop, but nothing's really going to happen. So why does he not just come out and categorically tell the fans, this is what's going to happen? Yeah. Why are the arsy statements? Why are they talking, talking it's Chinese whispers? Why, why, why no dialogue with the Green Brigade? And you know someone else, Jason, if they would just come out and be more straightforward with it, Exactly. It would, co- it would cease a lot of infighting as well. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Because you get a lot of this, but that is the sort of thing that brings you back to where you think, well, maybe they can't be as straight because the, there is a, there is another agenda. They've not exactly. had it, they've no, not had no, it laid in line. Without right. a doubt, there's another agenda. Stevie right. came, they came on here and basically slandered the club, but not one of them come back and say anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, there's just understand. one thing on that, and I mean, again just again trying to be balanced about it and you look at the good things Celtic have done you touched on them the new bar's fantastic it's cutting great. the prices was fantastic these are things that you like to actually listen to the support uh, through the survey going back to them and Peter Law when we were talking to him actually talked about that and again without trying to be any kind of apologist for the club talking to the Green Brigade probably isn't an easy thing to do because this, the whole ultra culture is about the not being there to be seen, you know, they probably don't, they're probably not comfortable having a spokesman. If, you know, there are probably. A, 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 Eamon, as I've Eamon seen. the Green Brigade will go and meet Celtic any time Celtic requests that Celtic do not want to meet the Green Brigade. The Green right. Brigade will go and meet Celtic any time Celtic requests that, and that's been the case for long and weary. The our manager had the number of one of the top guys in the Green Brigade. I'm not one of one of the guys in the Green Brigade. There was there's there's loads of people within Celtic Park can contact the Green Brigade within. Two seconds. But the, the, other meet, the, 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 the other difficulty for the Green Brigade themselves is, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know, but if what I read is true, is there are only about 80 members in there. There is. A couple of hundred, or if not two or three hundred in that part of the ground. That's There's great. a lot of people going there and behaving in certain ways that they don't have control over. And that's, that's a heap of group. You know, they're, they're not 50 year old men like me. They're not going to say, look, stop doing that. You know, they're not, going to, they're not going to do that in there. So there are a lot of people probably behaving in ways that they don't sanction either. Jason, that's just that, uh, right. if I can bring in, we've had another caller there and he's been he's been hanging on patiently. It was a busy show the night, obviously, as you can expect. Uh, just before I bring uh, Brendan in, just want to say if anybody remember, we've added a telephone number tonight. So you can actually call by a local rate uh, landline number. It's a Glasgow number, it's 0141 3567 327. And obviously, you've got the normal way you can just add homeboys and Skype. So, uh, I'm away to get a can of beer, Brendan. Take it away, man. How you doing, Brendan? You okay, mate? Not bad, Jason, myself. Yeah, doing good, mate. Doing good. Yeah, I just thought I was on a DD uh, point. Um, I think I called the wrong career more. Um, I think I was setting up nicely. Um, that guy was on your show a couple of months back. Stevie, was it? Yep, Stevie Kearney. Yeah, what Stevie Kearney, what Stevie Kearney says is that he's going to come to the park. Um, Lola doesn't want to be there. They might, they might say right in public that they do, but they obviously don't. I mean, they feel like they can get off it, aren't they? So, yeah, I'm concerned with the bring back a bit of this. You've only got to look at this, it's got to go and mention the... Uh, the see, see, you're like, you're lying. You're lying, Brendan. It's not the best, mate. I'm struggling to hear you. I can, I can oh, roughly... Yeah. Johnny, can you hear it okay? No, I can't hear him at all. I can't hear you at all, Brendan. You're as clear as a bell to me, so I'll just use that new number tonight because uh, sometimes I'm going to scarf it and get... Oh, do you... Eamon, can you hear him? I can, but you're a bit muffled, mate. Uh, oh, Brendan, right. listen, we'll call you back, man, right? Yeah, no problem. Listen, guys, I've had a good run for my money here, mate. I'm... You're, you're, you're welcome to stay on at the minute, mate. It's OK, but oh, it's something sure, you want to go. I think I just cut him off. Oh, did you? <laughs> you hey, man. Sorry, man. Wait, now I'm going to call him back because that's that's not right. Like <laughs> <laughs> I think I had. No, I think I was. Oh, I'm not sure. Wait a minute. Hey, man. Coil. Right. That's see. Oh, he's maybe gone. Uh, see what happens when I leave the room and get a can. It all falls to bits, man. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Do you, do you know how there's a bit of a coincidence here? I know, by the way, there's. I think um, this game tomorrow night at Ibrox, somebody was telling me today that they've only got half the stadium open due to a safety certificate. I don't know if it's true, if it's just a rumour. I don't know if you've heard it. Have you heard it, Jason? I'm 
I, I, I take nothing to do with that division. So, uh, division, the third division, second division, I don't even know what division they're in. But, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, they're not in the League Cup. <laughs> I, try, I try not to take any do with it. I see some of the things on Twitter and it does my head in, but obviously... But it's, the same, it's the same safety certificate for them as it is for us, so... Do you think maybe the Glasgow City Council have done a purge? And no, they're trying to, do you think maybe they're trying to even up if they, if they need to no, do something with them, they need to do something with us? Should be paranoid again, but you, you never know. You never know what, what, what's going on. Safety's a, safety's a big thing in, in football now. I, I, mean, I heard they're in big trouble for uh, flares that were let off at Forfar at the weekend. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> when they wear them, just that lack of safety. I, I, I just want to say, by the way, I've got a tweet there for Colin J. Can, and he says, uh, correct, Manchester Council have indeed banned the Poznan. So there you go. Right, okay. uh, see, it, we, it, we it, don't know. Somebody could have been injured somewhere, a broken leg, uh, getting their... I mean, you, you, you don't know these things. I mean, I don't think it's happened to Celtic Park, but... Well, that's I mean, right. I mean, I mean, the, 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 the new boys, Jason, hang on a minute, wait a minute. Just We've got Eamon back there, right? Eamon, I think I'm going to be cut you off by accident there. I must apologise, man, and you were in the middle of your uh, wee outro. No, you're OK, that's all right, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, I wasn't sure whether you'd heard me, but just thanks very much. For, I think I got a good run for my money. It's great listening to you. And, uh, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll listen, catch and I'll... We'll catch up later. Well, Eamon, pleasure, mate. Thanks very much for calling in. So, anytime you want to call in, mate, get some off your chest. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Just give us a wee buzz in anytime, mate. Yeah. Well, no, no, no Sunday Cheers. mornings and actually won't be on, but Monday nights, anytime, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eamon, all Cheers, the best, guys. pal. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers. Right, we've got Brendan back. Um, Brendan, were you saying that you, you, you tried the phone number before? Yeah, can you hear me? Perfect, that's, yeah, that's perfect now, mate. That's disappointing. Yeah, that, it was disappointing. Yeah, I, rang, I, rang, I rang your phone number, the new one, and uh, I could hear you as clear as a bell here to show no problem or server. Obviously, you couldn't hear me. No, uh, that's a bit disappointing. Uh, just, just something new we're trying. It, it works all right in another show. Me and Jason do the Mets boys show, so right. I don't know. Maybe it was just a wee glitch in the line when you were when you were calling, but. Yeah. Uh, I've had a, awesome. Before Brendan goes there, I've had a wee text with a uh, uh, regular contributor. I used to be a member of the panel, Mr. The Parrot, mm -hmm. and he says that Manchester City's ground is owned by the council, therefore they dictate the policy at the ground. Mm -hmm. So that's a fair point. But yeah. at the end of the day, I think uh, the council's maybe got an overarching uh, reach in any, any football stadium within their jurisdiction. I don't mm -hmm. know. But that's a fair point. At Manchester City, their grounds owned by the council. So at the end of the day, they implement the rules and regulations within that stadium. But fair point. So Brendan, what was it you were going to say, mate? Start a game for the start because I, it was a bit muffled there. I don't think the listeners maybe would be able to hear you. Yeah, it was just sort of echo what the, the rest of the lads have said on the show. I think uh, the lad who was on the show, Steve Kennedy, uh, a couple of months ago. He basically put it on the table that uh, Celtic owns rid of the, the Green Brigade, and I think that's obviously. Uh, Today's statement, as far as Celtic concerned, that's what that's what they, that's what they've got. I mean, I'm a, I'm a I'm a supporter of the, the Green Brigade, you know what they bring to what they bring to the stadium. But help Celtic will not hide behind its health and safety. Once you start involving health and safety, then there's no way around that. I'm afraid they'll just they'll just use that as the excuse to, to beat the, the Green Brigade. Yep, totally agree, mate. Absolutely. And uh, as I say, the Green Brigade need to box clever here. We know the. They want to stand with their beliefs and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you can't actually get into the ground and flout the law week after week. If that's what's the law of the land when you're entering a football stadium, then we need to adhere to it. And unfortunately, Celtics had to take these steps. So I love the Green Brigade, uh, but they're going to have to toe the line here. If they don't toe the line, then unfortunately that's the end of Section 111 as far as I can see. You can see probably how they're... So you can see how they're probably frustrated as well though because probably they're looking at their, their comrades across Europe and different ultra movements and this whether, whether we agree with flares or fireworks is besides the point like you know it's, it's youth culture like you know and they're probably looking at this stuff going on all over Europe and nothing happens to any of these clubs you know a couple of bangers went off at the, the Cliftonville game suddenly we are getting investigated by UEFA and as you said last week the scooters getting flung off bloody Tears in the San Siro, do you know what I mean? And nothing but seems to happen to these It's always been the same half of that bottle to get thrown at the Rapid Vienna game. It was about right. what, five yards away for the guy. Right. You know, replay the game, null and void. We had to go to Manchester Stadium that was over 
200 mile or 100 mile away from Selick Park. You know, so things hit us harder than they do then the, was it Uberti play Atletico Madrid? It was against, uh, behind closed doors, wasn't it? Yeah, that, yeah. Was a, that, was a, that was a following season. Yeah. How, how, long the, how long the GB been at Parkhead now? Uh, I couldn't tell you, mate, about six years, something like that, yeah. six, five why, years. Why, why, all of, why all of a sudden is it an issue, and why, why, why was it not a health and safety issue six years ago, five years ago, four years ago? Why yeah, they've, 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 been doing, they've been doing the lateral movement for three years, so it's, it's funny, and as Johnny says, Johnny <laughs> used an example of maybe Rangers losing a safety certificate, maybe Glasgow City Council's doing a purge. But see, see the bottom line here, Brendan, why does Peter Lull not just come out and tell us why it's came to fruition just now yeah. see if he's got nothing to hide see if there's nothing sinister behind it just come out and tell the fans because exactly. end of the end with half a brain realises what the Green Brigade's doing they're breaking the law so or breaking the I don't, there's the health and safety so, laws it's not a criminal yeah it's health, and so, safety, it's, health and safety, it's health and safety when it suits that's the problem it, Aye, I know, but they're breaching the terms and conditions of their ticket entering the football stadium in Glasgow. And so whatever... Yeah, yeah, I get, I get that, mate, totally get that. But at the end of the day, Celtic are essentially right in what they're saying. But what, what, what it says to me is there is something sinister at play here because, as you say, they've been yes. doing the lateral movement for three, four years. So right. what, why is that an issue now? I pr- probably, you know, I just... Yeah, I can problem. hear you, mate. They've probably just added this to the safety certificate this year. That'll change every year. There'll be different circumstances on that safety certificate every year, guaranteed. They, 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 if, somebody, if somebody gets injured and a, a complaint goes in, they'll change it. You know what it's like in the workplaces now. No, uh, this was on the safety certificate last year because uh, it came up on your show, like, as I said, that thing with that meeting the boys had with Peter Lowell. He kept bringing up this motion and lateral movement especially. But see, what, see, I don't understand what Jason's saying. I've seen a couple of things for the boys in the Green Brigade. They've stopped yep. the motion. Mm-hmm. So see, see the five, it's like the hunger strike, I see the five demands. It's like, so I don't want to use that analogy. But the overcrowding, right, I don't think, they probably, have got, that's done to the stewards. Mm-hmm. So motion, they've stopped that, they've stopped the body surfing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other one was la- lateral movement and the broken seating. So the, they said lateral movement they kept doing. The broken seats, that's just, Sorry, of accidental. They're obviously not deliberately breaking seats. So, at the end of the day, you're, you're backed into a corner. You know, you want to go and support the club you love. The course, club you Celtic, love. If Celtic are serious about wanting to keep the GB in Parkhead, isn't it about a time? Isn't the right time to bring in some standing with a two hundred limit? Aye, it would solve the problem overnight. Definitely would, eh? Definitely I mean, would. I see Matt, Matt McGlennan tweeted some photos earlier of some stadiums in Germany where basically you've got a barrier and the seat flips up, but it yeah. enables, enables you to stand. So from a health and safety point of view, but no damage to the seats. So for me, Celtic is serious about wanting to keep the GB on the ground. It's an ideal opportunity to bring standing in. Well, we know, we know uh, last year that um, Celtic investigated this and they actually had a company in. They had a company in who brought, um, they brought one of these... It's like a, it's like a, a stanchions that fall down and seats can go in or something like that and things pop up and you're actually it's, it's not like a terracing there's still like uh, rows it's still, it, still controlled I mean? by barriers it's but, not like the terracing there right. was every like four or five steps there was right. one just that barrier and they, I mean, like they that. had a, they had a, a company in between every, right. every somebody behind you's got a barrier between yeah. you and them right. yeah, yeah they had the company in standard. they had yeah. the company in and they, you saw the pictures they, they had it on the, the pitch at Celtic Park I think there was like representatives from other clubs over the UK come and see this sort of like uh, this company try to sell their product basically, and this was investigated. But we never really heard any further down the line of why why it's not been impl- implicated or if there is a plan to get it implicated down the line. Yep. I mean, this is something that just seemed to disappear again. Yeah, and see, see another thing that I was thinking about, we've got the supporters liaison now, John Paul Taylor, so mm-hmm. we've got a live phone in showing him maybe we need it ask him if he's willing to come on, because I'm sure Liam done an interview with him for the the Lost Boys, and he says he'd be more than happy to come on, so this is maybe we need a chance to get him on here and let the supporters phone up and throw their questions to him. Maybe we could have the Green Brigade on at the same time, that would make for a why, good show. Why not? <laughs> uh, go, go for it. Yeah, why not? That's That's it. It's... We can get the Green Brigade on, no bother, so hopefully John Paul Taylor will come on. Yep. Just kicking on to Wednesday night's game, Jason. Uh, I think we'll score over there. I think. Uh, I, I think. We'll, I think. I don't. I can't see them over, overturn us. 
Yeah, well, before we go there, Brendan, let us stay on the line now. Let us, let us discuss Saturdays and then we'll go on to... Well, right. first of all, let's discuss last Wednesdays and then we'll go on to Saturdays because at the end of the day, we've just went into the Green Brigade. So let's, let's go to last Wednesday first of all. So that maybe starts off your point. Harper, did you watch it last Wednesday? Yes, I'm just reading the message. I'm, uh, sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll start right. with last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, I thought Elfsburg were very ordinary at best. I didn't think Celtic were amazing, but I thought we, especially the second half, Elfsburg didn't even come out their half. You know, they were just, they'd shut up shop. I, I didn't think they were up to much at all. I thought we were by far the better team, but uh, I was delighted to get the, to get the goal because I thought it was going to look like nil-nil, which I wouldn't have been devastated about because I still believe as you say Brendan I think we'll score over there I thought yeah. Bangura uh, there was a lot made and a lot of message boards about uh, Bangura getting booed and if the parrot was on here I would tell him again he was quite rightly getting booed at the end of the day he's an employee of Celtic Football Club and he was trying to knock us out the most lucrative uh, championship in world football so absolutely I want to boo him and then when I seen the, the video replay again of that dive that he done holding his head his days are numbered at Selig Park. But, yeah, uh, I can't see us. We're really back at Celtic Park, are Nah, he did, he did a bit of a thankless task. He was up front himself, you know, it was hard enough for him. But I just didn't think they were up to much at all. I know they had the shot off the crossbar in the first half. They they kicked us off the park as well, which is their right to do. And it's up to the referee to enforce the laws of the game. But uh, overall, 1 0 at home. I, I, I take that every time in Europe. Uh, any well, any game you play in Europe, I would take one now at home. Oh, definitely, and the clean sheet. I mean, I listened to the game on the radio. I couldn't, I couldn't get it down here. I couldn't get a scream. Um, but obviously, uh, they targeted Sammy, didn't they? Obviously, seeing Sammy's a big, dangerous man. So every time he had the ball, he, 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 was, he was a man of the match for me. I thought it was excellent. But they did cut, They got on to him and they got on to wee James Forrest. You know, the double dump. Both of them. The main right. threats. So, uh, the they've, got, they've, got, they've got to come out. They've got to come out and try, try and play over there. I'm sure we'll exploit the gaps there. I the only thing is, though, my only big worry, and that's what it brings me in a bit of Saturday, is we miss Hooper big time. You know, fair play to Stokes on Saturday, but uh, we could have, if we Gary Hooper on Saturday, he'd have scored about seven or eight. <laughs> the, the, the big <laughs> Dutch guy missed five chances himself. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, ha, ha, I, I think he looks good, and he played well, and he was getting the positions, and He's got a bit of pace about him, but uh, so Johnny, last Wednesday, what was your views, mate? Last Wednesday, I agree with you, Jason. But I thought, uh, I can have thought this again. He had a great game last Wednesday. I thought it was super. Aye, well. aye, aye, um, um, I didn't think we were going to get the goal. It came, it probably came at the right, just at the right time. Another goal would have been, um, would have been ideal. But I, I was thinking the same as you. They're not the best team. I've ever seen at Celtic Park for a European team. Uh, Malmo looked a better team. I watched them the other night uh, against Swansea. But um, uh, two days before the game, away from home, now I'm a wee bit ner- my nerves are a wee bit starting to go. Where I was getting home in the bus that night, I was uh, a real scorer there. It's not going to be a problem. They never had a player, which I don't think they did. Nah. They had a good organisation and good good defence. But um, so did Ross County and. Uh, the weekend, you know what I mean. I think the game. I think the game was very five, similar. I think it was very similar to the to the games we played at home last year. Do you know what I mean? Aye. I think. I think. I, I agree with you. I think I'd be quite confident. Not overly confident. Not overconfident. Uh, but I'd be quite confident going there Wednesday night and getting a result as in a win, beating them there with one or two goals. Um, they were they were an ordinary team. Let's be honest. Uh, Bangura was probably one of the better players, which probably says a lot about them. Um, I think Joel Edley coming on completely changed the game. Uh, he, he bossed the game when he came on, I felt. Uh, Kyle, pff, man, I don't know. I, was, I think it's a big I, season for Kyle, but he seems to have just started off that, this year. That, that changed the game for me, Harper, uh, absolutely. I mean, See Kyle, Kyle seems to have just... For Kyle. Kyle seems to have just started. And, I'm, and I don't know what he got on Kyle, because we all know he's got it in his locker to be, be a top player, but... Ever since he's been injured, he's just came back, and that is the kind of performance we get from every time he goes on the park. Now he just seems to have lost someone. So Ledley coming on made made a big difference. And of course, we got the goal at the right time, especially for me. I had a tenner on Commons at ninety two. Like, <laughs> I was delighted, like, you know. But uh, now nah, I'd be quite. I mean, the second half they I mean, they offered a few things in the first half. We were maybe a wee bit nervous. I mean, they hit the bar. They had a couple of other chances, but 
we completely bossed it at the second half. I can't even remember Fraser Foster really having much to do in the second half. Maybe a couple of corners to deal with. But I'd be confident to go on there on Wednesday night. As I say, no, no overconfident. I'd love to see Samaras fit for the game. I think he probably will be. Um, but I'd, I'd be confident to go in there and, and, and maybe win 2-0 Wednesday night. Yeah, we'll go, four, we'll go we'll go four five one Wednesday, won't we? Probably play right. Sammy up on his play, play Sammy up on his own. They'll they've got to come forward, so I'm sure with the pace on our side will exploit it. It's not gonna be easy, don't get me wrong. I'm not being blase about it, but I think what what I listen to on the radio and what I've seen on Twitter, I think we're good enough to go over there and get a one 0 two 0 win. I if you if you'd seen the game, Brendan, you'd be feeling even more confident because they were ordinary at best. They they wouldn't be they I would put them in a par with sort of Kilmarnock or something like that coming to Celtic Park. They lost but, again at the weekend, didn't they? They lost again at the weekend. So, aye, yeah. they, they played away from home. Seemingly they're good in their own patch. But at the end of the day, if we've got European aspirations... The funny thing is, when you for Trent, you look at back to last year, how did we play uh, Helsingborg in the final qualifying round, the Swedish team, and we're playing the Swedish champions in the second qualifying round? What's the rationale there? Does anybody know? No, I think the Clifton, Clifton Girls the extra game in Clifton, Clifton Girls. Aye, but what I'm, saying is, what I'm saying is, our final game, I take it, will be, if, oh, yeah. if we beat yeah. Elfsborg, it will be harder than them. Whereas our final game last year was the Swedish champs. I've had a tweet there for Scouse Tims, it's called in a few times, and he says that uh, Man City, he thinks Man City bought the ground off the Manchester City Council when they changed the name. I don't know, have they, cha- have they changed the name of the stadium to their, you know, their sponsors, the Abbey Dabbey group or whatever? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. Sit there for them. Um, Parrot will text me back in a minute. <laughs> Does that stadium know something to do with the Olympics or something? will be available Wednesday night, Jason? Sorry, mate? You think Wilson will be available Wednesday night? Because I work with a couple of Forest fans and... Uh, well, the rumours are he's asked, he's asked he's asked around around him. He's, uh, well, supposed to be on his way back, according to... Uh, Couple of red I, with. Maybe I don't know. Maybe Big Ambrose and Mulgrew will Jeez. be a ten and a half partnership. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. I, See the thing about not, Wilson. If we can get a couple of million for Wilson, I think that's a good bit of business because the guy wants to go. Do you know what I mean? It's his last season, his contract. There's no point in keeping a player that's not happy. So I'd, and I, I know it's just easy. Any player could then just demand to leave. But I, he's, no, he's no, he's no, he's no. For all he was good last season. He's still just... Uh, I'm, not a replaceable, is he? He's, exactly. He's, right, it's right, not like losing right, Wanyama right, or Hooper. Okay. He's, not, he's not a replaceable, but he's our best centre-half. He is, aye. Uh, he and is. we're playing Champions League qualifiers here. Yeah, yeah. Aye, so, uh, so for two million quid, no, 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 I want to keep him. No, I'd keep, I'd, keep and see what, I'd keep and see if we qualify or not, but what I would do, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd let Billy Davis sweat like he made us sweat when we got him. Aye, I would, do him no we'll I would do him no favours whatsoever. Aye, I think he's away. He's home sitting. It's been well documented that he right. wants to go. I don't think his wife even stays up here. No. Uh, uh, the bottom, uh, bottom line being, being home sick, Johnny, and earning how many grand a week know, in Glasgow. Aye, my heart bleeds for him. Aye, I'm, I'm, I'm with you in that one. I'll tell you another thing. He back heeled that ball across the box the other night in that European tie. I don't know That's what right. this thing about. I don't know what it was wrong when he done that. Yep. Just uh, Jason, we've had a we've had a telephone call, so let's see if uh, I don't know who the caller is. If you can is just it give Alistair, it. it might be Alistair hi, Jack. Hi, hi. How you doing, Alistair? You okay, mate? I know, bad. What do you want to talk about, man? Well, uh, I just heard the the last half an hour there, and it was a bit the Green Brigade. Yep. Weather, weather. I'm not an apology. I apologize for Lowell. I can see it for both sides. And uh, I just wondered whether there was something to do with it with a with a flares because I've been at some away games and uh, people setting flares off and I think it might be just be one of these things. It's just got uh, bought up and bought up and the cobb just went, Oh that's enough's enough. But I can see it for both sides. Yeah, it's a fair point, Alistair, that sort of we touched it earlier on, but see if that's the case, why don't the club just come out and be honest and say, look, these flares are I unacceptable? Know, maybe, maybe they've been told, uh, look, you can't say things at the moment, but I just wish at least they would speak to the guys, you know, because I know one or two of them, and uh, it's really 
it's really bad, you know. But I'm, don't get me wrong, I love the guy. I've got the floor above my wall and it's, uh, and the Barcelona game will always be one thing I'll remember and it's a really sad thing, you know, we shouldn't be uh, fighting at this time. It's just so long at the minute. But, um, going on to Wednesday night, I think, I think, um, the, the, the boys will, I'll do the business, and I don't know if you heard that Van Gogh is meant to be injured, so... Ah, he's injured, he's out. Which is oh, a, well, probably a, it's probably a bad thing that he's out, maybe bring in somebody that's half decent now. Um, ah, well, that's no too bad. <laughs> um, no, well, as Jason said, the ordinary best and hope for the boys will do the business. So, bef so before you go, Alistair, what's your, uh, what's your prediction for Wednesday night, mate? 2-1. Uh, 2-1? Two one. Two one. Scorers? Who's the scorers? Uh, uh, Stokes and Big Sammy. Stokes and Big Sammy, aye. And then today, yeah. <laughs> last, last Wednesday, Big Sammy, he has a god, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he played in that game, he was outstanding. He changed the tune, Jason. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but, um, I'm not telling you what I call it. Van Gogh, I'm going to turn that drive. Being a family show and all. <laughs> Aye, exactly, mate. Exactly. Yeah, I can't. But, uh, if, um, no, but thanks, guys. And it's great pleasure to finally speak to you. And uh, just a message from Mr. Larkin. I know you'll be listening. Uh, Mr. Larkin, you're shite at the predictions. <laughs> he's not put that totally against the wall. He finished. He finished up at that home, and I'm up the top. So, uh, 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 okay. But I'll get out. I love stuff. your books, so why do we do that? So anyway, nice to see you guys in there. Hopefully, you soon. Okay. Excellent. You've got the phone number, so give a wee phone in again. Okay, Alistair. Cheers, 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 Alistair. Yeah, no give, give, give them enough rope and they'll hang themselves. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right, he's just sat there and biding his time. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I think it's quite sad actually. It's, it's, it's very strange. Uh, it's, uh, I, I just, I, I, I've got a, a niece that has boyfriends in it, and I know the guy, and these guys are no. I mean, as we've said that before, Jason, they're angels to what we were like at the first Oh, the things we got up to years ago. I mean, I just cannot believe it. I, I can't believe it. I mean, we are talking about this tonight with the Champions League on Wednesday. We had a great performance, I thought, at the weekend. And, I mean, when you text me today, I'd already knew. I've got three wins down there, can it? They're like, okay, talk rubbish. I says, I'm telling you, they've shut the section. I asked them if they want a refund or a re relocation. <laughs> That's, that's I know. unbelievable. Do you know what, right? We're we're probably going to keep we're we'll keep moving on to the football, and I can see us. We're going to keep coming back to this tonight as uh, we get callers. If we get callers, right? But I tell you, someone I would love somebody. It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody even in the Green Brigade, but somebody in Section One One One. Guaranteed, you are out there. you are listening. Call in, guys. Give give us a call and tell. I mean, I got a message there for uh, one of. I don't mention his name, but somebody who's in the section. And, He's thinking about calling in, but he's absolutely raging. So he doesn't know. I, I, I don't know if he wants to. He's got to be able to keep the heat. So, but if there is anybody in the section there, I mean, but, but we'll come back to it. We're talking about the football now, but we will come back to it. Feel free to call in. Although we have got somebody else lined up, Jason. Eh? So once aye, Joe, uh, Joe come on Skype the other now, so hopefully we'll be calling in. We'll aye. the boy calling in for the Cano Foundation. Talk about some of the great work we've done on Saturday. Yeah, and when we have the boy, we have Joe for the Cano Foundation on. I think we will concentrate on that. I don't think we'll take any calls. Uh, Joe, Joe come on, like. about the Green Brigade. No, but you know, what I mean, I'd like, I'd like him to get his point, his, his stuff across without us uh, buttoning in and, and change the subject. Do you know what I mean? 
and, and see the sad part as well, Johnny touched it there. I'd seen Saturday, see even though we won 2 1 against Ross County, we could have won 25 1. Yeah. I thought Celtic were absolutely brilliant. Just in front, in front of goal, some of, some of the chances that didn't go in, you couldn't believe it. Everybody was bursting out laughing next to us. Apart from my good friend Liam Brummy Boy, he had a big bet on Celtic to win the game at 1 4, <laughs> and he was losing the rag. <laughs> he was bawling and shouting and cursing and swearing. But uh, the goal had to eventually come. Oh, and the, thing is, the thing is, Jason, Saturday showed you what how we miss Hooper. I know that's big, an obvious thing to say. Big time, mate, big time. You know, make it, making them runs across the season. Just being in the right place at the right time for the tappings, that sort of thing. You know what that I mean? was Stokes, it, will that get you, Stokes will get you goals, but Stokes will get you the goals, like the second goal that he scored. That's his sort of goal, isn't it? He's not, really a, it's not, a, sn- he's not a snipper, is he? Well, his first goal was on the line, but I mean, you're, you're right, it's, the, Gary, the, the amount of times the ball was in the six-yard box, I mean, Commons went through a couple of times at the keeper and stuff like that, yeah, and yeah, Hooper, dispatches, Hooper, Hooper dispatches them, no bother, and it's just, with the, with the ball flashing along the six-yard, Hooper just coming in to tap them in, you know, he's got the sixth sense, with all good strikers need, and without a doubt we're going to miss it, but I just think the overall play with Celtic, I thought Ross County, the line-up was very strange, you know, they, 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 they're flat back five, you know, they'd five across the back and they were they were stringent the way they kept their shape. And what a goal the guy scored. Yeah, don't yeah, be right. saving that, you know. And uh, what, a, bad, aye, what a goal what a goal he scored, but nah, it was it was enjoyable and the full thing, the full experience and going into that Kerry Dale Bar and obviously before the game and I see he's joined us, a good friend of mine, Mr Joe Mackin. Are you there, mate? Good evening, last time he's doing sorry a wee bit late. No, no bother at all. Just before, so, just before Joe starts, I'm going to sign off, lads, OK? Brendan, yeah. pleasure, mate. All the best. Cheers, Cheers, Brendan. I'll have, a, I'll have a point for you in November because I'm up for the uh, for the Dundee United game and Paul Arkin's book launch, so I'm looking forward to meeting some of the lads. Just give us a wee shout, mate, and we'll get a few beers, definitely. Excellent. All, right, all the best. Hell Cheers, Brendan. Jason, it's just come up in the sky there that it's, the reason why they're shutting down the section is because of the seats that's been broken. Seemingly they've been broke for a season or two. I wouldn't worry too much about Sky. They're probably just picking up bits of the story. That's the sun on the telly, the sun newspaper on the telly. I wouldn't worry about any of that shit. But eh, great to have you on, Joe. And eh, we've not really touched it, mate. I just mentioned it briefly, waiting for your good self to come on. So, as I say, we had a big day on Saturday. Everybody involved with the Kano Foundation. So, take it away, mate. The floor's yours. Then we'll talk about the FIP after that. But, eh... Tell us about your full experience on Saturday, mate, and the run-up to it and stuff like that. Saturday, the run-up to it was basically chaotic, so I was really really having a place where I was running around with all last week. But I, as I, I, I've been getting involved with the Cairo Foundation, I can totally <laughs> vouch for that. There is utter madness behind the scenes. <laughs> and how it all comes together, we don't know, it just seems to happen for some things. There's a will, there's a way. That's it, mate. Uh, but Saturday, just... I take this opportunity to thank everybody who donated to it. It was absolutely phenomenal. And all the bucket collectors, there was, there was wee kids turning up, there was wee old men, wee old women all turning up to go and scrap a bucket for a couple of years. It was, it was absolutely phenomenal. The, the total we raised was £7,239. So it was basically a new the horse collecting, which is absolutely phenomenal. That, that, would, that basically, the money we're going to bank and that, that would secure us for the next two years. So we've got funding for the next two years now through that. Aye. So, uh, so they're not getting ready as yet. They might try and get ready, but they're not getting ready as yet. <laughs> and, that, and Joe, uh, to, be, to be quite blunt, see, when I blethered with you a good few months ago, he's basically had nothing in the kit. Nothing. April, April it was. I Aye. think we had, we didn't, we didn't even have half our season ticket money. Now we did in April. And that's how we were getting a wee bit worried and trying to get a couple of people in to help us. We asked for your help to promote us and things like that. And it's worked a treat. See the, the grand old team scheme? There was, I, think, I think roughly there's about 200 people doing that, giving us pounds, two pounds, three pounds, five pounds a month after PayPal. That is, that's been phenomenal for us. So we're trying to get around about a thousand. But you see that 200, it gives us something to work with. It gives us a, a balance there we know we can play with because we know it's coming in every month. Do you know what I mean? Which I've never had that before. Yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. We're actually taking kids to the game in Dublin on Saturday, which is a first for us. Big Brian's actually going to fly here. A couple of boys from the Ice Association have uh, got a group of kids from Dublin. But Dublin is for homeless kids, um, asylum seeker kids. Kids have never been to football before, they say. So they've got a group of 20 kids. 
And we're actually taking them uh, to the game against Liverpool, which is a wee first for us as well. We're actually trying to bounce it a wee bit. Yeah. So, and we've got a. Uh, is there no a press conference on Friday as well, you were telling me? Yes, I've not got the full itinerary for that, but as far as I believe, there's. The boy here there, Vincent, has actually arranged a press conference, and Neil Lennon is supposed to release two players, so as far as I know, there's going to be Neil Lennon and two players at this press conference talking about what the Kino Foundation day and uh, the good that's going to come out of these rains for Dublin going to the football. That's supposed to be Friday afternoon. So hopefully we'll get a wee bit more exposure eh, through the forums and things like that. Is that Vincent Dory, is it? Uh, Vincent uh, Dory, I know Vincent. Do eh? you know Vincent Day? Eh? Uh, he's the, I think he's the, he's the vice chairman of the, the Irish Association. That's right, he's, yeah. he seems very capable man, Vincent. Oh, definitely, <laughs> aye. aye. Uh, so he seems to have his goals and he's, he's gone for it. He's, he's, he's doing everything positive for us and he actually wants to do it for us, do you know what I mean? So it's fantastic, it's probably a lot of work for us, actually, Vincent organising everything. Aye. One thing I'll say about Vincent, uh, himself and Jason would get on extremely well with a political <laughs> beliefs and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell, I tell you, I tell you as well, uh, my good pal Big Tommy uh, Harper. You'll meet Big Tommy for the mm-hmm. first time in a couple of weeks. We're around New York, yeah. so Big Tommy, he's, he's part of the committee and the Manhattan Number One, the Fenian Boys for Jack Dempsey's. So they've actually they did the AGM last week. And I've been saying to Tommy, and Tommy's brother's got a good gig with Nike, and he's got a lot of s- stuff to do with uh, his brother Jerry. Uh, brings a lot of kids over uh, to Scotland with trials with teams uh, all across Europe. In fact, any young American kid, he'll be their rep and things like that, and he'll bring them across. So Big Thomas has uh, kindly put it to the committee, the Manhattan Number One. So they've they've agreed that the. the Charity of choice this year as the Cano Foundation. So I'll say a couple of words when I'm over in a few weeks uh, at half time for the Inverness game. Just let them know basically what the Cano Foundation is all about. And as me and Joe were talking about on Saturday, it's all about branching out. And if any, I know there's a lot of supporters overseas that listen to this show. If any of our members of Celtic supporters clubs, and you want to know more about the Cano Foundation, just go on to www.thecanofoundation.com and read up about it, or contact us at Homeboys, and I'll put you in contact with Joe, or Pat, or Tommy, or any of the guys that's uh, on the committee, or I can help you myself, and just anything we can do to promote the Cano Foundation within your club, send you scarves, t-shirts, whatever, you know, anything that can promote the Cano Foundation and you can help us get the next generation of Celtic fans into the stadium, uh, it's much appreciated. But as I say, hopefully, Joe, this is now, we're going to start going places now with more and more supporters clubs taking to do it. Well, what I'm, what I'm actually trying to do is, so you said that bucket collection, if I can actually have a Cano day, just that one day a year, but everybody collects for, I wouldn't need to keep having dances and wee band nights and wee race nights and and the same people coming all the time. See, for that amount of money, seven thousand per year, that pays next year's season tickets. Aye. We're, we're secure. You know what I mean? That'll be two, that two years, fair enough, there's a few years counting it, we'll get in the rang. See, I'll be all accounts, big Brian trying to get it to the bank today was a bad experience as well. <laughs> But I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, wee, a wee bit about my day, Joe. I mean, I turned up, me, me and my wife and my wife's pal turned up. I think it's always good to get a couple of dolly birds. They can sort of bring the, they can bring the money in. And by all accounts, uh, Linda and Katrina were jumping on supporters buses as soon as That's they were right. arriving. That's so right. uh, I think they're... I was putting my bucket back, I think. Aye. Uh, the I top I button, top button at the blouse, Jason, was it? Uh, I, I think they're... Uh, well, uh, uh, all, all's fair, love and war, mate. I, I think their buckets were a bit heavier than the rest of theirs. So, uh, and they, the two of them had a Ball, they loved it, but the bit where I was standing, I was catching a load of them coming down for the Marnock train station, and uh, it was humbling me. It was humbling the amount of guys, and obviously we Declan, it was you. He was a star, just as well you and him buggered off because I wasn't getting any donations when he was there. We <laughs> Declan, I ended up standing at London Road. That was just the fence. She's the taxis were falling in. As soon as that taxi door opened, the bucket was in the taxi door, the guys came out and they saw it in the bucket. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. But it was, it was humbling. And see the amount of people that said to me as well, here, mate, there's some money, but I'm also giving you the direct debit. Uh, and I'm also paying the, the, the monthly thing. 
It was brilliant, and I had a couple of people coming up to me and saying, "Can you tell us what, what is this? What is this Evil Foundation?" And I, and I thought that was really good, yeah. and I made sure there was a couple of them there, and I explained to them that there's 52 kids coming the day, full contingent, and uh, 10 adults, and I says, "Kids from all backgrounds, all over Scotland, apply, and uh, just need the boys." Says that'll do for me, mate. And they were getting into their pockets, fivers, tenors, and stuff, and it was brilliant. I think, you know, I think that's one of the benefits of going to Saturday. A lot more people point out this. What do we? Aye. People just jump in the taxi and run straight into the ground. Do you know what I mean? They don't actually yeah. walk past the room where we meet. Maybe, maybe we'll start meeting at different points around about the stadium so more people get warious. Because there's right. thousands and thousands of fans out there that don't actually know what we do. That is good to hear. That is good to hear because I think sometimes we're in danger of thinking uh, because we do this stuff on the internet and that. That, that, that represent everybody hears about it and that. And that, that's not the case. Like, no, we're, we're, we're a tiny percentage of the Celtic support, like, no? See, when seeing a Saturday before the game, you give the kids like the wee goodie bag, you see, almost, I think it's called the Celtic bags that attracts people, but hundreds of people come in and ask us, are they for sale? And no, we can't sell them. So, what we started doing was making up so many spare ones. So, when the people come in, we can give them to their grandmothers, they can just take one care away and things like that. But there, there's so many people that don't actually know on a match day what we actually do. You know, they've heard about it. A lot of people still think the money goes to Martin Cade in Australia. They don't actually know what we're actually doing. It. So it's still yeah. off the mouth spreading. So, so days like Saturday is a big bonus to us. And basically, I'm going to thank Celtic and all because uh, David Brannan actually met us about one o'clock. He was at a meeting. He came down and met us and opened the doors, gave us early entry at the Celtic Park, got him collect all the buckets and let the sticker all the buckets and all that. He'd assured running up down the stairs to us as well. So I'd like to thank you and all for my patience and Saturday. <laughs> yeah, you know, because we, obviously we discussed the Green Brigade thing about Section 111 and that's pretty negative, but there is a lot of positives we can take as well for the club and for that kind of help, the Kerrydale suite. Even me, myself, I phoned them up the day because my season ticket didn't work on Saturday and uh, the lassie fixed it perfectly over the phone she's like look don't worry we'll do this we'll do that and totally resolved over the phone so the customer services i got for the ticket office the day was set to none so big kudos to that but uh, and the reason my season ticket didn't work i took an all season ticket my, my season ticket <laughs> <laughs> my season ticket is jason just if i can just say right somebody in the chat room here has took this for the, the celtics official twitter says so a section in question would be returned to current occupants if compromise can be reached, hope to have further meetings to discuss. Aye, uh, e emphasis on the further, they've not had any. Mm -hmm. you know, they, uh, they maybe had the summer a few years ago, but uh, they've not had any lately. But what, what I would like to get back on to Joe on Saturday, uh, Jim, my good mate Jim, no, Jai Cam, the post and sell it, yes. mind, a good friend of mine, he came, he done the, he was in our rafting, the white water rafting last week, right. and uh, he got his a bucket and one of the stories he tells was uh, we stand in his bucket and these two wee lassies come up to him with a bag with all their coppers and all their money for the house that their mum and dad had told them and they donated all their savings into the bucket you know and it's things like that brings a tear to a glass okay. eye do you know what I mean what, what can you say about that that's just phenomenal I know I actually am somewhere else in the ground as well a wee lassie come up with as much as Jai can go with four coppers and a coppers and a that's two, two different individual ways than that, guys, and Saturday. Aye. Which is and see, see, see the Celtic support. See when, you, see when you, you break it down. What other support on the planet could do that before a game? Just just turn up. And okay, we'd publicise it, but we'd, the world didn't know, because a lot of people coming up didn't really know. But just Celtic fans just dig into their pocket and stick fivers, tenors, pounds, twenty pences. I mean, there was people that apologised to me because they were only putting two quid in and stuff like that. And you're just saying, "Look, mate, you know." And it's it, it's up. Uh, do you know? I was I, I was it was Linda's pal. She 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 stuck about fifty or two quid in each of mine in Linda's bucket because she says you need you need money to that lab. Right, so I, I took mere change out of pocket and stuck it in. So I was just standing there, like knee, knee in the bucket, not to make it rattle. And I wasn't doing any shouting and that. I was like, just people were coming to me when I went out. Uh, when I gave you my bucket before I went into the stadium, I went out to Linda. Linda and Katrina, they're bawling and shouting. Kenno Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> they're like getting the full Monty. And everybody was coming to him. But the bit, see, when I was kicking the bucket off my leg, see, when it got to about two o'clock, I couldn't do anything. I was hurting my leg. <laughs> 
There's a wee woman stood beside me through the huddle board and see when Declan is Declan's a can people like me even go to the game and she just gets <laughs> on her bats rather than a bucket in front of them because they put something in it. Uh, so they'd pass Declan and the woman be woman would say to them, He's collecting all the change, I'm collecting the notes and people are <laughs> I just gave them all my money. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant so I know. Ah, it's just amazing and the, the work that you the work that you guys put in, you know, and you're always like Saying you're a rabble, and you, I mean, as it's as about a rabble, but see, see, the end of the day, see what he's are good at. He's are good at doing what he's there, and he's got it done, mate. And uh, mere kudos to you, because the time and effort that all you guys put, and I only do a wee bit to help you, but the time and effort that all you, the main guys, it's all got to do with it. It's, 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 it's the time. All day on your phone, emailing, phoning people constantly, yeah. and then you're at night, you say you're sitting on your computer, answering emails and private messages and all that, it's constant, absolutely constant. Yeah, so, but the buzz, the buzz you must get out at me, especially after Saturday night and stuff like that, you must have been able to sit back and have a beer and just say to yourself, what the hell, we achieved that today? Saturday night, aye, I was actually coming in the train, I was sitting thinking that once it was all done and down, then I was like, how did we get through that? I know, because Linda came and picked me up, she went home, she didn't go to the game, she went home and uh, got the kids and uh, came in and got me and we went into the town and got something to eat and we were sitting there and I think it was you or Tommy who texted me and just told us the total, the final uh-huh. total and we, we just couldn't believe it because I was saying to Linda, what do you reckon, how much do you reckon, she says, I don't know, about £3,000 or something like that, is that a bit much, because she's saying to herself, well, say, maybe 5000 that push, if I've only got 100 quid in the bucket, because Tommy was saying some buckets were really full, some buckets weren't, you know, and I think it all depended where you were standing, because I know, see the guys across the road for me, they probably wouldn't get as much as me, because I was right. getting them You're before they were coming, aye, right, so right. that's only to be expected, you know, but there was some areas where people would have got a load, some areas where they maybe wouldn't get a load, but I reckon, I reckon, you want me with a long stick when you're collecting your bucket? Uh, no, I didn't see her. There was a wee woman with a long stick and she went to Springfield Road. <laughs> I went to the I missed the first 25 minutes of the game or so, came out back the room. I was kind of the last one on London Road. I ran away room, get the bucket in. Somebody said she was still at Clay. I said, okay, I'm going to have a bucket. Really? I got her just to the car park. I could have her her bucket. You couldn't get any more coins in her bucket. <laughs> She must have been assaulting people with it, trying to shake your money with them. Her bucket was absolutely full. I don't know oh, how much she raised. before I got involved with you guys and like helped me a wee bit I've always been one that would stick fivers and tenors in and stuff like that but I wouldn't proactively do it myself you know uh, but see since I've got involved and starting to do some stuff he's, it's I've got I've got the buzz you know and I, I want to do more you know and it's it's because you're helping mothers and it's just when you can see the faces of some of the wee kids seeing the photos that he's publishing and stuff like that and you can see the kids and you hear some of the stories about the wee Pat was telling us about a wee lassie in one of the pre-season games that she didn't uh, she'd never been to Celtic Park before she was handing a scarf in at the back of the, the, the end of the game the line was for you and she burst out crying and all that I was actually doing that game but I missed the wee lassie I was I was doing stickers on all the seats so it makes it easier for the Rangers, I missed her. But I was actually doing that game that day. And Aye. these kids actually came to our Christmas party last year as well. And they were just sitting and talking about their Christmas party. They were like, who's coming this year? Who's coming again this year? Who's coming this year? They were, they were just buzzing for the whole game. Do you know what I mean? They were just caught up in the whole atmosphere. It was Aye. a whole game night. Like, so was. But that wee last year, I heard you saying that last week on the show. I thought Aye. the show last night, I heard Cam. I heard Scott try to get on. And that's when I heard you saying it. So I did last week. And because Pat, Pat told us at the rafter, because it was a, uh, he was saying that somebody told he wasn't there, but he says I'd have been crying if I was there. Aye, <laughs> but, aye. Uh, the real last year was an ambition to go to Celtic Park, and uh, she got to go because somebody else called it, she said. But at the end of the game, we gave them like, a bag with sweeties and a scarf and that, and a wristband and things like that, and she was getting that bag, because she thought she was not going to be like that, but I know you can keep it. Aye. Aye. She just started getting that, because she was happy. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. So, so what's what's next in the agenda for the Kano Foundation? What's next? Well, doubling, I hope doubling goes well because that's our first venture and 
boring soil. But, right, okay. Uh, hopefully that will all go to plan. Everything's, everything's all set for that. Aye. Uh, so, and the next thing we've got is we've actually got a golf day in Mount Ellen, Friday the 6th of September. We've got a few ex-players going to like that, so, have, so hopefully that will be a week. Uh, a nice day. Are you still taking bookings for that? I'm still taking bookings. It's uh, around the golf for your two-course move for 50 quid. Okay. Oh, 6th of September, Friday, Mount Ellen. Friday the 6th of September at Mount Ellen. We won last year at Newton Mearns, in Port Marine, you know, but it was a cracking game. So I hope for this one, but it'll be a bit better again. But I've always tried, always try and get them year on year to be a bit better, something a wee bit different, add you don't get sort of thing. So say this year we've got four X players coming along, so hopefully it should be a good day. Yep. And uh, obviously with the white water rafting, I take it we've earned good money for that. Uh, I know myself, my wife, we put a paid job and uh, we've got over three hundred quid. I think I think it's nearly four hundred with the gift aid, you know, yeah. between the two. So I think there was a buddy done that to be honest. Aye, and there was a, there, so there was a good 25, 24, 25 took part. So hopefully that's good funds as well in there, mate. So aye, the future's definitely the future's bright. The future's green and white, and it's one, uh, one of the boys taking the gate on uh, white water rafting. And I think the last time I seen him, he was at twelve hundred pounds. Twelve hundred quid. Twelve hundred pounds. I think just, just, just for him alone. Him alone. That is unbelievable. Jason, is there any truth in the rumor that you said you'd pledge fifty quid to the Carroll Foundation if somebody booted your wife into the river? <laughs> <laughs> I'll donate fifty quid to the waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mate Jim, Jim was sitting there. He says, "Oh, the thing that went flying that day was says was your wife or my nut." <laughs> I really have, has he done something so she did? Oh, that was scary, mate. Oh, I've only seen the boys. <laughs> oh, my God. Aye, it was scary, but uh, aye, it was. She said she would do the white water rafting again, but she would get off at the end of that water, before that waterfall, and then walk down. Because they, the, they gave you the option at the end whether you want to get done it, and it's it scary. I look scary in the video. Aye, that's scary. I tell you what, but Tommy's talking about, well, potentially next year, uh, the skydive, I'd be up for that. Aye, yes. It's weird, we were talking about that a few weeks ago, then all of a sudden Celtic didn't win. And oh, Celtic didn't win, aye. I'm trying to get one going in. Tommy was actually talking about the Ben Nevis thing and all that, and all of a sudden Celtic didn't win. So, aye. if he said there's about 10 people wanting to throw themselves a plane through, so. Aye, I'll, I'll do it. Me, 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 me and Jim said he would do it. Jim said he would do it. I'll do it. So, Tommy's, Tommy's trying to find out a price for a few different people. We'll try to see how much people take for actually in the skydive. I'm sure my mate, I'm sure my mate Spara could do. Uh, he's already done it for the Thai Tims. I'm sure we could, uh, we could convince Spara to get himself up. He'll be, he'll be going to Sweden in the morning. I think, I think he's off to Sweden. He's no master sell it away game in Europe for I don't know. I think he's missed about one in the last twenty years or something like that. But he'll be off to Elfsborg. But he, I'm sure we'll get Spara. Uh, he's listening to now anyway. But he'll come up and do the skydive. He's already done it for the Thai Tims. I'll tell you something you can count me out of that anyway. My wife done a skydive for charity two years ago where I sat on a park bench watching it with a carrot. That's about as far as I got like, oh no, no danger. I wouldn't even get one in one of the wee planes. Far less jump out it. Johnny, what about you, mate? Uh, if, you, if you were meant to fly you to wings, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I have to jump out it either. Uh, you never done the white water rafting either, oh, you either. you're dry you're dry land, didn't you? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> bike bike rides and ever. I'm trying to come up to that bike ride last year. <laughs> So what about have you been in the you been in the Kerrydale Lounge, Joe? Yeah. I, I was talking to a guy, one of the boys who sell mind you put football in. He was there with his wife and his wee daughter. He was in before the game. Right. Uh, he said it was brilliant. So that uh, you know, uh, the wee, wee bite to eat and that. Uh, and said the spring was all right. Was that boy scooped or something? He was there in Vegas with a boy right. scooped or something like that. Uh, it was him who was on a Saturday. But he said it was fantastic. Definitely go again. All right. Uh, their their sparrows just text me. He says I'd do it again. No bother. He says it costs about two hundred and forty quid each. So well, that's I, well, right. one of the quotes was like four fifty and a half. We need to try somewhere else. No, there was just, right. yeah. She said two forty each. That would be all right. She says so if everybody could get, raise five hundred quid, it's two hundred and fifty at the kino. Right. You know yeah. that could be that's well doable. But uh, aye, so that's happy days. Cheers, sparrow. So the uh, I haven't an after the game, Joe. We went after, after the game. Was after the game. 
Aye, aye, it's open for that. I don't know the normal. See that that late kick off. Did you ever know? Did you notice the amount of seagulls kicking about Selick Park? Exactly. They they must know the timing because they, they were they were hanging over. They'd be away home. They'd be able to eat all the hamburgers that are chucked away. <laughs> but there was bloody hunters there. <laughs> and uh, aye, so they uh, we were running there after the game and in. I had about three pints or something and then Linda came and picked us up. But uh, it's fantastic, you know. It's what kind of size is it, Jason? On. What size is it? What kind of size is it? Give us a kind of idea of the layout. It holds, it holds 800. It's massive. Right. It's the, it's okay. the one if, if MD's been in it, if I've been in it loads of times before, if you've been in like an executive thing or that, it's a big massive bar. Aye, Club 67, it's that. Right. Just at the back of the Celtic again. It's got big screens up as well. So uh, it's showing you old games and stuff like that. The music's brilliant. It's like the Pogues and stuff. There's there's all big and eclectic uh, sort of list of songs getting played. And, aye, it's great. Just sitting in a great atmosphere, just with Celtic supporters, and there's a wee buzz about the place as well, you know, after the game. So if, if anybody's gone into town for a night out after the game, that's the ideal place to go. Let the crowds disperse, and then just head out and you can get a bus or a taxi or whatever when the, the main body of the crowds are way back into town. And I absolutely brilliant. And uh, hats off to Celtic. I've seen a couple of wee table football tables, and things like that for the kids. You know, if you want to take your kids in. And uh, uh, it's that big, the kids could run about daft. <laughs> you can just say, away oh, he's going, we'll see you in 20 minutes. But it's not. They're showing the game on Wednesday as well, isn't it? Are they, aye? Aye, they're showing the game on Wednesday. See that? They've been, they've, been, they've, been, they've been crying out for years. One, one thing I, I must admit, uh, your guys who are in the investor section and all that, they must be saying they're saying, what's the point of coming in here? Well, that section is actually quite cheap during the game. People look up there, see where the Swedish final sat last, last week. Aye. See, they did a wee block because it was empty. And Saturday there, there was only must be people for the number seven restaurant. It was hardly anybody sitting in the party seats. Aye, I know. So that was because the club 67 must have done away with it. I have to say, Aye. Jason, since Sixtus is just uh, in the chat room here saying three cider, vodka, and coke, and an iron brew for the parrot, 22 quid. It's no cheap. Uh, I well, I get, I get two pints of Guinness and a pint of Magnus, and it was, I don't know. 12 quid something like that I don't know it's, I don't know it just it was a I know it's not it's, it's not going to be cheap you know it's not, you're not in a workman's club mm-hmm. but at the end of the day nowadays when you get in the tin you're going if you're in Glasgow you're going for a couple of pints if you get in the city centre for a few pints after the game then you know it, it isn't cheap it's not maybe cheap they, maybe we'll take the numbers to fall we back for what the price is going to be back they're probably stuck with prices at They'll be probably priced the same all the way around the stadium. That's probably Aye. the problem. And, I, and I've drunk quite a few of the bars. They're not that cheap, but at the end of the day, that's what it is. You can't be charging folk less in there, and then yeah. your investors are paying 16 17 or a quid for a ticket and yeah. paying more for their drink as well. You know, they can't really do that. So it is what it is. I yeah. think it's positive. I know we can moan about the price of drink and stuff like that, but it is what it is. You can get it, you don't even need a drink. You know, well, you the thing is, Jason, you've got the choice. You don't have to go in and pay the prices. You can go somewhere else, like Northam. Aye, so that's uh, it's it's up to you. Friendly as well as you're saying, so that's a help. Especially for Aye. people coming to like, the end of England or across the Boki Island or something, you know, in the Ellen. Well, well, do you know, my good mate Mickey, uh, no South Derry, Tim, and Selly uh-huh. Mike. Uh-huh. So, Mickey, I met Mickey and after the game, so they were getting a late boat home, so loads of Irish supporters were in it, so it was ideal for them. They could get a few beers before they got on their bus. You know, and before they yeah. maybe just be sitting on their buses. So, yeah. uh, aye, if you've been tying the ferry right, you can get a couple of pints as well. So, I, as what it is, you know, and if, I, I heard four pound ninety is for a bottle of Magnus. I didn't get a bottle of Magnus. So that's that's extortionate. But aye, don't, drink, much, eh? don't drink bottles of Magnus. <laughs> Pay that and draw the Guinness was lovely, you know. Pint of Guinness was beautiful. So I've got no complaints about it whatsoever. Good, good wee buzz about the place. Decent punters in it, and uh, aye, it's just a good wee addition to the stadium. So at the end of the day, we're quick to slate Celtic with loads of stuff, but hats off to them for that. And uh, I've still got my issues with them with section one one one, but I can, I can only, I can only see positives about the Kerrydale suite. So that's a big, it's a big thumbs up for me. So moving on, then we, we spoke about Wednesday night. We, we've kind of covered that. Um, we've got Liverpool in Dublin on Saturday. There's a much excitement as I know you're not going, Jason. 
Johnny Joe, he's coming across to Dublin or? No, I'm not going to Dublin, it's funny, but he's just going across. No, I'm not going, I was going to go originally until they drew uh, Cliftonville, so I went to that instead, so I'm not bothered. Well, that kind of kills that discussion flat then. <laughs> no, honestly, really, you're going to be going, so what's your plans, mate? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure of my plans yet, we only managed to get four tickets for our new, we've got a supporters club here, just started up in Drogheda, the St Lawrence's CSC. Um, just, Do you want to give us a wee bit of background, why St Lawrence, what's the... Um, well, there's a, there's a, you would have to kind of know Drogheda, there's a, there's a stone gate, which is one of the original, uh, Drogheda was a walled town at one time, obviously hundreds of years ago, whenever, right, and the original sort of archway still exists, and it's called St Lawrence's Gate, and the bar, that's the Celtic pub in the town where we go and watch the games is directly opposite the gate, so it's St Lawrence's Gate, so that's, so the St Lawrence's Celtic Sports Club, uh, if I was going to tell you who St Lawrence was, I'd be lying through my teeth because I'm not a clue. Right? right, right. <laughs> there you go. But we've got about 30 members, just a brand new club. We only managed to get four tickets. So there you go. I mean, it's, you can't get tickets for this game for, for love nor money. So I'm not exactly 100% sure what I'm doing yet. But I do know I will be meeting, as I said earlier, Paul Larkin. He arrived in Dublin today. I think he's based himself in Dublin. He's, he's getting his son for the week. He's over for a week. So I'll certainly be meeting up with Paul before the game. Um, so if anybody wants to meet up with myself and Paul, why you would, I don't know, but if you did want to meet up for a pint, if you listen to the show, give, give us a tweet, uh, at homeboys or at harper1888 or at paullarkin74 and we'll meet up, we'll see where we're going to be and we'll, we'll get a few beers, we'll certainly be going up three or four hours before the game starts, it's, a, it's an evening kickoff. it's half, pa half past five I think, something like that, so uh, Dublin's going to be absolutely buzzing, there's bands on everywhere. Uh, or O'Connell Street, Murray's has got the Wakes, Quadrophenians, Charlie and the Boys are in the Button Factory after it, Quinn's have got the Athenian folk, the Druids, I mean there's stuff happening absolutely everywhere, the place is going to be bouncing, like, no? it's going to be good crack, and I know like Chuck and that are coming down for Belfast, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to meet up with them, um, but I guess, guess I shout and we'll meet up for a few beers and get a bit of crack before the game. Okay. So what about you meeting the Liverpool loyal for the Shankill? You meeting all their boys? Well, as I say, I've been sitting here in the banks of the Boyne waiting for their boys for the last eight years, like right now. So if they, want, if, they want, if they want to meet in Dublin, I'll get them halfway. Eh? <laughs> Re Repatriate them with the Boyne. <laughs> there you go, Johnny. You wouldn't be. Uh, you would. There would be no love lost between you and the red shirt of Merseyside, would there? Oh no, definitely not. No, I was going to go. And listening to Harper there, I've uh, maybe think about it again, maybe a wee thing at the week, because I couldn't we'll take a look at I'm going over like, um, right. and uh, Harper, I think I've got a couple of spare tickets made, so I'll... But, hey, but I need them. <laughs> have, have, you got, have you got a couple of spare tickets? I, I will ask, I gave mine away, but Big Michael McKeever's got a couple, so... Right, tell me, phone me, I need them. Right, okay. I need them for uh, Ian Mack, needs them for two boy, two Celtic fans for Dublin. You know right. that how they were offered to me and just just jumped in there. That's that mate, you're no faster than last. That's me, I'll need to give them now, Harper, because that'll be me finished for getting down to the Mersey. Well, he, he, know, he knows who's getting the tickets, and this is, this is Mr. Ticket Man. So Listen, I've know. got a ticket, so I'm okay, man. Anyway. No, no, but this, this guy is a Mr. Ticket Man. He can get tickets for anything apart from this, seemingly. He knows I can always sort of pull strokes for that. And I've got the boys of Belfast looking out for tickets for me. I didn't even try until he asked me the other day but he sorted me at numerous times and I likewise with him uh, for any Celtic game I, I sort of a funny story I got him and uh, he's, he brought these Australian Macedonians to the, it was a big one big Vian Venegur a Hessling score against the Buns in the last minute I met these Australians uh, <laughs> and walk about funnily enough after I finished work walked up one of them's got an Australian a jacket with an Australian flag on it so the big Union Jack red white blue thing I says here pal, I don't even grasp the concept here. Get that <laughs> off or get it turned inside out or something. <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, it was American. I don't know. Did you meet last week? Did you meet last week? Who did you meet last week? Who did I meet? Aye. Oh, I, I, boys of Belgium. Oh, 
Belgium was a Friday night. I get supporters. My mate could speak French, and it turned out. It turned out he he started talking to him. They couldn't speak French. They come from the Flemish part. So his his ex wife was Dutch. So he started a wee bit of Dutch, and they couldn't understand that either. Where, so, where, uh, where did you say was fair? They were fair. Belgium. Ghent, aye, Belgium. That's uh, my first trip to see the Celtic abroad, Ghent. Aye, well, they were out for, they were out for the game on Saturday. Were they Ghent fans? Ghent, like? Ghent fans. I think, I, know, I think they support a few different teams. I think maybe one of them was a Bruges fan, and uh, the other one, two were Ghent and Mechelen. Or, 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 there was there were five or six of them, and they supported different teams. I left, as a, the drink was flowing, I left. Went for a pint after work, and I left about nine uh, Friday night, and they stayed. Yeah, right. So we're in the Mercy City and uh, I've been home. But, uh, so I don't know how the conversation. The boys were trying to talk to me and like f- I couldn't make a word that they were saying. <laughs> Two of them had no English whatsoever. The other ones were rabbiting away in pigeon English. And my mate, he he loves all the language stuff. He's trying to get in a bit. I was like, oh, I can't deal with this. The music was loud and it was just too. I just I've not got a clue what they're talking about. But uh, plus the fact my wife was wanting me home. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the main reason so why I, I, the I, question. Aye, that, that was it mate aye, I didn't want to be stirring up a safe head for the Kano boys you'd be, you'd be getting a bit rattling nuts there Joe if the guys were in <laughs> the guys were in film fitness <laughs> aye. so uh, what's our predictions for Wednesday night I'll go first I'll go 2-0 Celtic oof will be you Joe aye I'll stick with Two, I, I don't think that team would get much money off of than we've seen last week. Right. Okay. What about you, Johnny? Uh, I, hate I, I think the Celtic will win. I think they went 2-0. I, I, honestly, I, I don't think they, they were a great team, but as, it, as, it, as the game gets closer, I'm a wee bit more worried. Do you know what I mean? For the last uh, few years. Uh, we have been good away, away from home in Europe, but you know how we can be just as bad as well. You got me 2 0 as well, Johnny? I 2 0 Celtic. Who's the school dinner lady shouting the instructions in the background? Who's going on here? That's Joe. Is that your Joe or that Joe? Aye. Oh, you Joe. You got a full house anyway, haven't you, mate? <laughs> Brilliant. So uh, I'll go with 2 1. I'll, start, I'll, I'll copy Alistair. I'll go with 2 1. And I'll, I'll actually take uh, Stokes and Sammy for the goals, but I think we'll leak one. I hope, I hope we don't leak the first. That's a, that's a key. We mm-hmm. need the first goal. Mm-hmm. If we get the first goal, it's done and dusted, then you get three, isn't it? Aye, aye. aye. The first goal's key. Yeah. If they get the first goal, it's panic stations. Well, we hope yeah. it's not. Aye, it is. <laughs> I can probably see Ledley. Ledley pipe up with a goal. That's not a bad shout for first goal scorer, by the way. I might have a wee fiver on that. Because uh, Ledley, he got one in the, uh, was it Hells, where was it last year? Was it the... Uh, Helsinki scored. Was it Helsinki uh, scored? Put it in his chest, I think that was the same uh, time, was it not? Chest at the back post, wasn't it? Uh, wasn't it Helsingborg, it was Helsinki, I uh, I think that was the second goal. So what happened, we, did, we, we see, didn't discuss the season see, uh, last week. See, just before though, just while we're on predictions as well, I was wondering what you think in the Liverpool game, um... I think probably you'd have to live in Ireland to realise the importance of this game, really, for Celtic fans here. Because uh, oh, I just get looked at like I'm daft when I talk about Celtic and the work. And they just, honestly, EPL fans here just look at Celtic as a complete diddy team. I swear to God. So uh, my biggest fear is going out and getting humiliated. No, you know what I mean? Getting a leather for Liverpool. I, I don't think it'll happen, but. It is very, very, it is a very, very important game for Celtic fans living in Ireland. I'm telling you that right now. And I know it's only a friendly, but it's to go into the work on the Monday and just say, "Look, do you know what I mean by that?" Hear me. Aye. Hear me, Johnny. On you go. Uh, see the thing about uh, them. They have humped us a few times in friendlies, mate. So don't be surprised if they did. I know. I was doing it in Russia's test the morning when the Hammer was six nothing. They beat, they beat us at Park, he'd have cut my gubbins and all. But see when it comes to the crunch, we've got a good record against them. So, I, I, I don't see us taking it as, as serious as, uh, as you would hope it, they would. 
I know, man, but it's uh, just the whole. I, I mean, I, 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 I know what you're saying because I live in a town that's full of them as well. Right. And it's one, it's one of the reasons why I didn't go. Because I definitely don't get enough sale. Mm. Uh, so when they when they when they when they drawn me Cliftonville, I just completely changed my plans. I thought just, that was a better option. I just hope that we put on a good show because there's a lot of Celtic fans going to the game. It's a sellout game. But the eyes of Ireland will be on that game if you like. Do you know what I mean? All the press over there. It's it's on television. I think BT Sport picked up. Is that right? Aye. aye. Uh, so I mean, I really I just hope that we go out and we put on a good show for the fans that are gone and that, that it really is a, a big thing. For, for me to, to try and get some sort of result against them and I know it sounds stupid it's only a friendly and I don't even normally watch Celtic friendlies on television I've never seen any of the pre-season but it's just it's because it's them I hate them more than any other English club since I moved to Ireland their fans are the, oh, you're, you're no bad there man. their fans I their fans I'm telling you now their fans are the biggest sneers in Ireland I swear to God so I, I'd love to put it up them they'll be going to win the league in Oh, yeah. ah, they're still living in the 90s, aye, that's one. Oh, man. unbelievable. 90s, 70s. Well, aye, 70s. Aye, aye. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just no, but if, if I was going to the game, aye, but I would, I would get totally annoyed with them. I can't stand them. They do <laughs> my bloody head. They're, they're just they're horrible. They're just, they're just not... They're, but there's a bit of me, I, I, I'm not saying quite likes them, but there's a bit of me quite likes them. So, see the Scousers that support them? Some of them are like good pals of mine, you know. I hate them as a club, but uh, that's obviously because of the Everton links and things like that. But there is some Scousers that support them are all right, you know. I know a load of Scousers that are Celtic-minded and they've, they've got a load of the Rotten Mob as well support them, but... Uh, Ah, Jason, I didn't care about them until I moved to Ireland, aye, and I'm aye. absolutely surrounded by them. And they've got a—they're so smug about nothing. Aye, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in the seventies, they could be smug, but they, they don't do it. I'm sorry. Aye, it's the kids that are supporting them if they're barred into them with their dads because aye. there's no other reason than because they'd all be walking about the Man City jerseys on if it wasn't for that. But uh, the, bit, the bit that gets me in the, the free staters uh, is about them to wear Chelsea shirts. You know, so Chelsea and Liverpool to me, nah, they wouldn't be me. But uh, aye, there you go. So I hope we hump them, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really bothered. It's Wednesday night is all I'm caring about. Jason, I just want to come back to someone here, right? I'm getting a few tweets for Guy uh, Sheephead23, right? And he's been uh, tweeting back and forward with John Paul, uh, what's his name? John Paul Taylor. Taylor. John Paul Taylor, right. And he says he's been speaking with one, uh, been speaking, have been speaking with one group, except that some people may not be part of the group. What group? Um, John Paul Taylor saying he is, he is in discussions with group. And the, and the boys saying, is he meaning the Green Brigade? Can the Green Brigade confirm this? And as I replied, saying, well, the boys are having a meeting tonight, so we obviously can't confirm that. He says, John Paul Taylor's tweeted back again, confirming he is in discussions with the Green Brigade and he's just saying it would be good if you are able to confirm for the boys, Harper. I mean, obviously we can't confirm that because we, we are not speaking to anybody directly at the minute, but John Paul Taylor's tweeting that he is in discussions with the Green Brigade. So that, that is at least a positive. I think it's good to hear that, yep. that both sides are coming together and hopefully there will be a compromise and, the, and they will sort this out. I think, I mean, nobody wants to lose the Green Brigade. We are all big fans of the Green Brigade. So let's, let's, let's get, get this sorted out. Aye, definitely. Definitely. By the way, Harper, I know, I think, you know, the, the Liverpool game in, in the weekend, mm -hmm. Celtic will be playing on Tuesday night as well, if we win on Wednesday. Yeah. See, you know what I mean? So they're going to take that into consideration. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something that I don't know if, how this uh, pans out for this game, but see the, the Dublin Super Cup uh, a couple of years back when it was Celtic, Inter Milan, Man City and the League of Ireland team. Now, I, had a, I had a press pass for that and I was talking to the guys, uh, the organisers of the tournament and I was saying, like, do you really expect Celtic to, to fling out a first team when they're, like, there were two games in the season? It was the same idea. We, we opened the season and then we went and played that game with Europe as well. And they're actually, They says to me, well, they definitely will be because they're contracted to bring a first team and play a first team in one of the games, that's why they're getting paid a million quid or whatever, do you know what I mean? 
So, one thing I will say, it will only be a reserve team that will take the field against Liverpool because they're no pint, they're not getting paid to bring a reserve team, if you know what I mean by that. Which, for a lot of fans, will maybe be a bit, and myself included, like, the game doesn't hold that much importance when you look at the European game a few days later, but it kind of puts us in a sticky wicket. Because I imagine this will be the same again. They'll be contracted to bring a first team because they'll be getting paid good money for a, a sell-out. What's that? Is there, a, is there a game the following week? Is that not the Scotland England game? Oh, it will be. That's the 14th. It'll be the following week again before Celtic. See, Johnny, this is why you've been palmed off to us. <laughs> <laughs> so, aye, so, aye, so there's no... But even, even at that, during the season, at the end of the day, if, it's, if Celtic and Liverpool have came in agreement that there is no going to be any tough challenges, no, I play, play your full team, but at the end of the day, I'm not really too arsed about pe- uh, friendlies, and uh, I'd just rather... Play a couple, of, play a couple of young boys, get Callum Waters and stuff like that. We run it, see what some of them have got. But uh, I'd be the same. Worried. But I don't think they'll be allowed to do that. I think there is certain conditions coming with the, the with the with the payment for playing. If you know, I, I think I know. I think they'll start with a strong team, but half time or whatever. I think yeah. after just a pass, will be ten something or that. But you, you know as well, it's see Celtic, see when we play friendlies against English opposition, especially under Mark Manil, there was no friendlies. You know, we used to compete. Aye, we did. Sweet. We did. They made, they made them one at Old Trafford. Oh, aye, aye. I see all your boys. That was a great friendly. I loved it. It was a great game. Was that the one that Sutton scud at Beckham or something? Aye, Lennon scored that night. They beat them 4-3. It was a great game. I thought that. Is that Giggsy's? Is that Giggsy's? Giggsy's testimonial, aye. I'm not sure if it was a testimonial or if it was just a pre-season friendly. It was a week before they went to Ajax, I'm sure, and beat Ajax. Great game, I thought that. I went to Ajax, I wasn't at Old Trafford. I was going to, I was going to ask you, um, I was actually going to say to Paul, because he was going on about it last year, it's about Tony Watt. I can remember Paul was at the, he took in the, the, the Under-21 tournament at Fir Hill at the start of last season. He was saying he thought that maybe Tony Watt was maybe going to get in loan because he, he thought maybe there were something going on in his background. Well, I, I'm worried about this guy, Tony Watt, the new... I mean, I don't know if you remember the game on Saturday. He came on, he played out left. He had two or three nasty, he had a couple of nasty challenges. He was lucky he never got booked. And maybe he did get, I can't remember, right? And I'm saying to myself, there's something no right with this laddie. And Paul was saying then last year, he was thinking to himself, people were thinking about putting him out in, in loan. Do you think maybe that's the case they knew? Because he definitely didn't look himself on Saturday. He put a bit of petulance a couple of times. He hit that laddie at the edge of the box and... Call him Tardy, Tardy, didn't look as if he wanted to be out wide. I, 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 I know what you're saying, but uh, if, can you remember his two tackles? He was late and he was lucky. Um, I, I can remember them. And see, I don't know, I think he actually played all right, Tardy, Johnny, to be honest with you. I, do. I, I think he played not too bad, but uh, he's not suited to boot in the wing. There was a couple no. of times, I think it was Wee Forrest put the ball in the six yard, or it was Commons or whatever, and there was nobody there. You know, there wasn't him or Stokes. But I'm thinking, of, of him and Stokes are both playing up front, but they weren't, he was mere out on the left. But right. Sammy, Sammy had given the sort of, like, no, Sammy wasn't playing, what am I talking about? <laughs> was it? Yes! <laughs> No, but he, he's out in the left. Aye, that's right. Because Sammy, that's what I was thinking. Sammy's out in the left. But he put up, he, aye. He, 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 did, he did track bad, Jason, but that's when he clattered down the edge of the box. It's, it's no good enough. It was, but he's, uh, maybe, he's maybe trying too hard because he's one of the best. He's that one in the box. Aye, well, see, the boy hurt the bar with a free kick. That's right. That's right. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a dangerous position. You lost a rag. I know he's not playing in his position and all the rest of it. He's a young boy. We all know he's a talent. I mean, you don't but, score goals like he done last season if you're no I'm worried about him and it was just with Paul, with Paul saying that last year if he's going through the same problems I mean I've heard rumours that he's out up to this and up to you always hear that you don't know if it's true but aye. do you know what I mean that, but it's no, I, he's, he's getting to the age that he's there's big rumours he's, he's going out and loan but I just think I, I hate judging players when they're, they're not going to run games you know, and see when they're bringing them in for 20 minutes here, half an hour there, and then folk are expecting them to change the world. And you say to yourself, well, no, they need a run of games. And I think somebody like Tony Watt, especially with Hooper away, I mean, there is an opportunity for him to get a run of games here, but whether Lenny fancy, we don't know what goes on the training ground. You know? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I
And I know it's a, it's a shame to because um, look at the, you can see when he's when he gets a run, he's a good, he's a good, he's running after the ball, he's awareness running about him. I mean, I was at Inverness when he scored their two goals. I mean, that big centre half hadn't a clue where he was all game. All he done was turn around looking looking about him to see where he was, and the next thing the ball's in the net, you're saying to yourself, this boy's going to be a cracker. Then all of a sudden he's away off the boil, back in, and then he bangs one in against Barcelona. I know. And 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 it's as if he's been I don't I honestly don't know, and I think he's carrying a wee bit of excess weight and all. I don't know. I don't know. I just hope the boy keeps the heat because there's no doubt about it, he's he's go he's got the ability. Well there were stories Aye. last season, the tail end of last season about him getting sent to to train with the, the, the boys again like and that it, it didn't really work it went sort of the wrong way that he kind of took the huff about that and that's what the story started about him going out and won and stuff like that um, if another striker or two come in that, that, that we're hearing might come in you, you, it maybe wouldn't do him a harm to go away and loan it someday for, for the season like. uh, and, and get game time up, or yeah. I, don't, I don't think he, I don't think he's the same mouldy Gary Hooper he can't, he can't come in and be a ready-made replacement for Hooper for me no, in a minute. Really. No, but I think he could potentially be a great player. Just uh, getting in at the deaf here, because uh, we are two hours into the show, and we've been joined by the one and only Parrot from the Perch. Stephen, are you there, man? How you doing, guys? All right, sorry. I was out having a, 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 late, a late luncheon, early supper. So You're probably on the pints. Oh, this oh, mellow I wish we were snorting mellow birds all day on calf came raised with a posse, you know what I mean? Cutting a, cutting a bit like Christopher Biggins with shots on in a corpy bus, outrageous. <laughs> Christopher Biggins. <laughs> I, just, I, I just made it indoors. No, I mean, I, just I fo- right, I fo- before, we get, before we go anywhere here, right, this Mo Bangura carry on, is it knocked in the heat? Well, I, I, do you know what? See, see during the game last week and I turned around and... I think you've met my brother Paul Jason, didn't you? He's aye, a, you know what I mean? He's not the nicest guy in the world, mate. He can't get served McDonald's with his cooking. I'm not saying I'm Robert De Niro or anything, but sort of, he started off and I looked around and he went, ah, well, fair play, the guy's having a go. And, and then before all his petulance started, and I looked around and my brother actually drew a sheriff's badge on his coat. <laughs> and I went, oh, this is looking bad. And then when he, when he went off after all his nonsense, my brother booed him and away he went. So that was fine. But no, it was just to announce my new CSEs up and running. I've got one going. Hey, oh, what's this? Well, obviously, we Tony Cassidy retweeted the, as about six members of the Celtic squad in the Scotland under 16 squad, one of them being we Calvin Miller for Manfred, one of my boys for Castmill. But my new, um, my new CSC is the Lorenzo Fagan, number one, who's my under 16 goalkeeper. I name like Fagan. I've got, to, I've got to get him as my next number one, you know. Good for, big mate of mine, if he wants a Fagan as well, so aye. No, I love Fagan's the world, mate. Uh, <laughs> Pick a pocket or two. He didn't get paid for he didn't get paid for cutting about the palace like all the poor stuff. Aye, aye, you've got to Mike Michael is on or whatever, haven't you? <laughs> but no, it's just to see that the uh, the affiliations released a statement tonight and it's very refreshing to see that they're they're hopefully opening an olive branch up to everybody involved to get this absolutely nonsense uh, carry on about getting the Green Brigade and getting the club sorted out like, you know? Okay, so what's, but, what's the rough what's the rough outline? Well, no, it's just, just a wee thing to say he's quite disappointed. I don't know if MD's phoned up of obviously commenting. I was only, I jumped in Tommy's earlier on when I, when I was out having lunch and talking about the, the fact that Celtic Trust jumped on tonight to, to basically say hopefully things will get sorted out. But just really disappointed the way that obviously you guys will be aware just where I sit and, and they've closed down such a large area of where I'm at, like people sat there 18 years and, and they were given a, a week's notice and then obviously the troops down below me have been, you know, people like Lou's been found out in social media today before she's actually been told that her seat's sort of uh, condemned sort of thing, you know, she's, they're, they're not getting back there unless things change. So it was just that and really uh, what he's writing about how the squad reshaping is going with the, the transfer rumours. I mean, Kevin Doyle at 1.75 million as a 29-year-old is absolutely ludicrous to me. I just think it's paper talk, mate. I don't believe anything any of them saying until Celtic's actually got them signed, sealed, delivered. I think that's one great, one great yeah. thing about Celtic is nobody knows what's happening until we've signed them. But, I mean, uh, we, look, we look at that squad, though. I mean, we're signing guys that are raw talent. And, I mean, there's nothing for me, but we've lost so, so many key players and squad players. And even Paddy McCourt sneaked out the door. And, and the squad's Fred Bear. The pressure that's been put on these young lads. And I, I'm absolutely embarrassed looking at Peter. You know, although he's got an SV bar set up, apart for the prices, since Sixtus was running right in there on Saturday, uh, apart for the, 
Apart from that, we've got absolutely nothing. And he's sitting there with twenty-one million pound of money sitting there, and they're just earning interest off it. Aye, it's um, it's a fair point. They've took a gamble with this Champions League. See if we get not, we get pumped out by Efsberg on Wednesday night. He'll know all about it. But um, <coughs> it's gone all right, the new mate. We're one now up. I think they've oh. took a gamble. They've took a gamble that we'll get into the Champions League, and then hopefully they'll. Uh, Listen to first things. So we've got, I mean, we've got another qualifier. God willing, touch and mood, but we get by the Swedes on uh, Wednesday night. We've still got another qualifying round before we, we qualify yeah. for the group stages. Yeah, I mean, it's put, it's put. Do you think the Dutch guy looked no bad? That's uh, all good, though. It was, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was very pleasant on the eye before he got hobbled off. I, I, tell, you, I tell you policy. something. <laughs> I tell you something. Watching on television, like no, the, the boys definitely got it. He's got a touch, a wee kind of touch of class about him. No, when you just see a player and you kind of know straight away, I think I think that boy's going to be a very very good signing. Although I did laugh, we were kind of laughing in the pub watching it, like no, because he had the whole thing about I'm not a sick note and this blah blah blah, and then he's off injured after half an hour, like no. But <laughs> he didn't try to stay on it, but honestly, uh, it was he unlucky. Like. It wasn't <laughs> I think he looks yeah, a good so, player. Do you honestly think so? I thought he could wait to get off. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 I think he tried me, I think he was nagging it. See, see the trainer, he's like that right away, substitute. I so mean, he, he, he did he do a sub straight away because he went half at the sideline and tried to run it off. Tried to run it off, right? I mean, it's, it's like the, it's like the, the centre half of Bob Big Virgil. I mean, I've seen a picture of him, I was quite alarmed to actually see him in like a stucky trainer cutting about, you know, all these players were bringing in, and, and for, for a club of ours, status and the way we turn the players in, we shouldn't be really. We I mean we all remember that Paul Elliott's first year and he didn't appear and we're not in the position now that but, but I mean the squads Kelvin Wilson's don't want to be here. He's at the door. You know, and then apart from Charlie Mulgrew got in the centre half, I've no many got other options, have we? We've got the um, other boy uh, that we that we got for Wolves, uh, Maya Loco. Oh, but the, the black Darren Anderton, he spent more time in a sick bed than oh, I don't know, David Murray's legs. It's absolutely but we're, we're buying nothing that there's that, I know I'm I'm usually hey, very whoa, pessimistic. Whoa, 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 Mr. Parrot. Right, listen. See over the last few years we can slate Celtic for a lot of things, but one thing we can't slate Celtic about is their signing policy. And it's been brilliant. At the end of the day, I do, aye, absolutely. Names. What about Darren Murphy? Right, right, listen. Wait a minute, you're the man that had the more right. Bangura fan club. Right, OK, I, I right. Love, I love let, me, let, let me qualify this. See when you're, see when you're scouting about the market, one, one and a half million, two million, you're going to get a load of duds. But see for four duds, you, you get one gem, and you get a Victor Winyama, you get a Gary Hooper. You know, then the day... If you're, if you're in that market, every one of them's not going to turn into a world beater. It's impossible. If it ever, oh, ever doing it. Like but, but, what, but what I'm saying is, the, the, the way Celtic have been signing players over the last few years, they've been signing quite a few players. There's been a bit of a turnaround. But I think overall, Celtic have been excellent in the transfer market. And it's been reflected with the relative success we've had in Europe compared to the league that we play in. So... There's no way I'm going to sit here and listen to somebody come in here and lambast Celtic about their signing policy because I think the signing policy has been great. I and, I reckon, and I think maybe Peter Law sat down with Lennon and says, right, if you get by here, then we'll maybe push the boat out. And we might get that Finn Borgson or something like that because that rumour's still going about. And I would, I would love that guy, that young boy to be at Celtic. But the, way, the, the market that we operate in, mate, I don't want us to go and sign 29-year-olds for £2 million. I think it's a bit of a donkey anyway. Oh, but no, I totally agree. I mean, but you look at the policy at the moment operated by Tottenham Hotspur, who's got, who are going to lose potential a player maybe 90, 105 million euros, and they've been out today and spent 28 million pound for a Valencia striker, you know, and, that, and that's, we've, but that's potentially on the strength of them getting money, and we've got that money in the bank. Ah, no, 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 Stephen, Stephen, that's, you, you're, you're actually comparing a team that played in the English Premiership, no, that's guaranteed 40 no, odd million, and no, 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 but, no, but listen, have you, have you been to White Hart Lane before? Aye. Right, see when you get in there, see you buy a programme at the start of that game, half of the programme is made up of sponsors. They've I've been, been caught, they've been caught for it, but, but you can't compare Celtic with Tottenham Hotspur, with the amount of money that's getting trans- Aye, that's trans- so we've, we've got to sit, we've, no, my point being is, they're, the Spurs have been out now and, and done some business, right? Now we're in right. a position, hopefully we beat this Swedish team, then we have got to get a striker of, of competence, 
because play, playing two wide wingers is great. Like Chris Commons, great player. James Forrest, great player. Sam Arash in the wing, exceptional player. But with nobody in the middle to improve it, and Stokes has been compromised and made to look. He's he's been made the scapegoat because he can't play that role. So we're in a position now. If we hopefully beat the Swedish team on Wednesday night, we have got a very very narrow window before we go up against a team. I mean, an absolute top team. So. The money was there. So are, we, are, we go, are we going to go up against an absolute top team if we beat Ellsberg? Well, no, we beat yeah. yeah. Arsenal a couple of years ago. Didn't no, 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 no. We, no, we no, can't no. get an Arsenal. We, we're no, the Champions no. Group. Well, we're, 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 we're going to get Dinamo Zagreb. I think, or I think like wait a minute. I think, I think it's quite clear that I think it is quite clear that, that the striker that we bring in is all going to depend on this result of Wednesday night. That yeah. if, we, if we get beat on Wednesday night, it will be a Kevin Doyle. For probably about one one million one point two five million. Well, well, it'll, 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 it'll be somewhere around about that mark. It'll be one one point two five million, right? And they'll probably get Kevin Doyle for that if they push that. And just for the record, I'm a big fan of Kevin Doyle, having watched him a lot for the Public Island. But anyway, that, that that's besides the point. But if we get through that tie, then it, maybe we'll be a fan of or, or whatever. We don't know. Maybe we've went and spoke to players, and players have maybe come back as well. I'm interested. The agents maybe came back as well. My, my, my client's interested in coming, but I know if you get knocked out of Europe. <laughs> so my, I mean? my, my, my point would be, though, I mean, and it's no disrespect to these players, but I think we've found a level that guys like Kyle, who were great players and had a very unfortunate injury with, with his, that scumbag who didn't, should have been banned from football for a while. But unfortunately, we've had guys like Victor Winyama turned up at the club, who is a freak because you'll never get somebody like that at Celtic Park again for 10 years. But he showed the level, the level of player we actually need to compete at Europe because the Premier League's done now. No, we've got to hopefully touch wood win it for 10 years. But guys like Kyle, Charlie Mulgrew, no disrespect, fantastic squad player. But these poor guys are being shoehorned into playing positions they can't play. And guys like myself are just sitting up the perch. We're throwing pelters at them. And that money's sitting in that bank. And as you say, Jason, I accept we're looking at the £1 million mark, maybe £2 million. But... You know, that this guy's turned this guy's turned up, I've signed him for Portugal, he's a raw potential, two that two point something million pound. Well there's fantastic Scottish produce going down to England for buttons and we're missing it. You know, but we go back to the obviously I'm gonna mention Fletcher, but somebody like James McCarthy's gonna be potentially moving to Everton for twenty million pounds. Aye, but, but, but you can't say I, 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 I totally I totally agree with you. Nobody moving to Everton for twenty million pounds, that's a non starter <laughs> anyway. But the thing is, see you can't sign everybody. You can't. You can't get. There's going to be some slip through the net. Bloody Charlie McGrew, we they sign him back, we let him go for nothing. You know, but look at Shea Gibbon. Selig lost him, we let him go for nothing. There's always going to be ones like that. You can't. You can't base it on who we could have had. I mean, could I ask you? Right, obviously, Kelvin Molson's away. Right, that's that's evident. He's not away. He's still with Selig. But why? But the guy, the players asked to leave. You know, do you really aye, want somebody of that mindset? Well, the, the bottom line is, aye. If, if we've not got a better centre-half, aye. So you'd rather play somebody who's whites in England and he doesn't want to be here and he's waiting to the road? You'd rather play somebody like that when his family's 200 mile away and the guy's not really bored? I don't, I don't give a... See, see, be brutally honest with Steve, I don't give a shit about his family. He's getting paid a hefty wage to play for Celtic. Oh, of course and and, and yeah. from a professional point of view, he'll try his best. See all this, it's a family. I work away from home at times. You work, you work in the bloody Merchant Navy. Yet then the day everybody's got to earn a corn. If, Celtic, if he's contracted to Celtic, he's playing with us, and we need him in a Champions League game, to be perfectly honest, I don't give a shit about his family. I want him to play for Celtic. See, to be honest though, Jason, I think if we get through the qualifiers, you would, you would happily let him go then. Well, the, aye, aye, if we get through the qualifiers, aye, aye but this is over in time. For us to then say we play Charlie Mulgrew and Effie Ambrose at the back, no, I'd rather have Kelvin Wilson there because I think he's better than they two in aye, the centre half position. Jason, would you know, would you know be quite happy with your big list out, step into centre half and no. putting young, young Matthews out in the right because he no. can own it to the weekend? No. I maybe would after a few, a couple of months of playing it in the Premier aye, League, but no, there's no, too no, much in it. There's too much in experiment. I just find it a certain team. See the big, the big uh, F.A. Ambrose. Oh, I don't know. Bomb scare. I don't like. Oh. Uh, exactly. That's that's what comes to mind. That, 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 that's why I'm I'm saying we need Kelvin Wilson there. It doesn't matter if we sign the equivalent of I don't know some best uh, Yap Stam. See, we sign the, the modern day Yap Stam. He's still not going to fit in for this game when he wins the night. That gets back to my point where there, there's money sitting there and we should be trying to bed in right. players because even even if we do go out of Europe and touch mood we don't, we still need players in there. 
Aye, I Stephen, I agree with you there, but what I'm trying to say is, see the market that we're operating in, you don't know, see that's that's the beauty of Celtic at the minute, for all Celtic's faults, see the way Celtic conduct their transfer business, nobody in the red tops has got a clue what we're doing, and I love it, because none, 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 none of us here have got a clue what Celtic's doing, Celtic could have five players lined up that we don't know about, we could wake up tomorrow morning and Celtic have signed two Dutchmen or two Norwegian superheroes that we don't know about. Cel Celtic, the way they conduct their transfer business is brilliant, and that's the way I want it. I don't want all the gutter press to find out about Celtic, all these guys that live on Twitter that tell you this, tell you that, tell you next thing. Celtic conduct it in-house and they do it the right way. And the bottom line is, we see, the, see the type of guy we can attract to Scotland. We need to sell the vision of Celtic in the Champions League, and we need to sell the vision that Celtic can be a step stone in the English Premier League. That's the only way we get young potential talent to come here. See if we're getting over the hill talent. We're paying well over the odds for them to come here because they'll have three or four offers for an English team that's going to pay them similar and they're going to go to Old Trafford, Anfield, Goodison, whatever, every other weekend. What are they want to come here to go to bloody Easter Road and Fir Park and stuff like that? No, I, I totally agree with you, but I mean, I, I mean I'd, I'd, I'd like to think, I think, I mean, obviously, Kelvin, all right, he's Celtic player, and I say Kelvin. Does go. We need two centre halves and we need a, a centre midfielder that can pa play a pass. We can go in. Key was the last one we had. Then Manyama before he slipped away and we need a couple of strikers. But I, I'm just so very, very. But you, you but you're saying, like you're, we have you're, signed two centre halves. Aye, but you're saying we need this. What do, what do we need it for? For our assault in Europe? Because we certainly don't need it for the Premier League. But we have signed two centre halves. We signed, oh, yeah. we signed the big boy who's out injured. Unfortunately, he's out injured. Night. Who, who comes with a, a pretty good pedigree, like. Yeah. And uh, we've got the boy, as you say, my local. I didn't even know too much about the boy. But we have signed two centre halves, like, who will be that. ideal for Scottish football. And by all accounts, the, the boy for the Ajax is he's, he's very good. So he, he, he looks good to me. But, but, but Stephen, what, what do we need these guys for? Uh, I'm not trying to be cheeky here, but. See, see, the cha see for the Champions League, fine. We need better players, but we're never going to get the better players that make us compete in the Champions League we're potentially winning it. That's not going to happen. So we need to be very, very lucky. Europa League, aye, we could maybe have an assault on that, but it's not going to bring in loads of money. So what do we need these other players for? Because see the squad we've got now, it'll win the Scottish Premier League at an absolute canter. But I do agree, Jason. I mean, we all know, and you even said it yourself, watching the game on Saturday, we're crying out. For a, for, a striker, for a right. fox in the box, like, well, right. and right. we knew, I, I, we knew I, I, Hooper I, I, was I, leaving. Personally, I, I just think, I, I, I look at the set there, all right, I mean, up front, we've got what we've got, it's still great, midfield, we're okay, but we've got a very, we've got a lot of white players, we've not got much in the middle, my personal opinion, Kyle, for me, is a cash and carry in black, he's a good, he runs after the ball tremendously, and he's always got a nice haircut, but, but that's it. Uh, I think he's murder. He's never come back for that. Um, but unfortunately, that's, and, and unfortunately, if we never, if we hadn't seen a player like Victor Wanyama at Celtic Park, we wouldn't have known the difference. But we have done now, and I'm not saying we're going to go out and spend eight million pound. I'm very realistic. If we spend over two million pound, I'd get a nosebleed probably. But I just think the squad, the league we're playing, the way we're spending on the Dutch guy, we're going, to, we're going to have quite a high attrition rate with injuries and. These guys have come in to me look as if they've got, you know, they're an Andertitis. So the young, the youth squad, the young lad that's been playing at right back looks fantastic. But we're in a position where we've got two great right backs, left back side, we're no bad. We've got Izzy Gary who's coming back on a game. There's some, there's some good positivities. But for me, the squad, I'm just no buying it at all. We've got too many players, even Sammy. Sammy in Europe's exceptional. League games that can be in and out. We've just got too many players who can. They're not consistent enough for me. See, and see, and this year, I don't know. See, to be honest, I mean, I'm quite happy with the, with the midfield staff that we've got. Um, I'm very so, happy uh, with our Scott Brown and Joe Ledley. Kyle's going to obviously cover that, but I think you'll find probably F. Ambrose, that's where he, he'll come into a midfield role as well. I don't think he's he's uh, cemented in as a centre-half by any means. He's only filling in there at the minute. I probably so Wait a minute, wait a minute. But I think Ambrose as well has showed last season he is a decent player, and but he's a far, far better, more reliable player playing in the centre of the park. And I, well, I, you, I mean, I don't. I know it's, it sounds stupid to say, but I was never ever thinking that we needed to replace Wanyama in the sense that, well, we've lost Wanyama for the centre midfield. We better go and sign a centre midfielder because I think Scott Brown is going to hopefully 
be fitter this season, play a lot more, go- a lot more, more games. We have brought in the the, the Dutch Edley. boy in the wing. You've got Joel Ledley. I'm quite happy with the midfield. I'm just concerned about the centre half position, as you say, because there's no doubt, there's no doubt whatsoever. Kelvin Wilson will be leaving, and whether even it's today with his family or that Celtic is not going to let anybody run their the final year of their contract in. Never in a million years will you see that happen again. So he'll be sold for whatever. It's the last year of his contract. He'll be gone, right? What? But we've got two centre-halves in. The young boy looks like he's got a great pedigree, but I would like us to bring in somebody with a bit of experience. There's not to be big money, but a bit, a bit of experience. But for me, the, we are obviously crying out for a centre-forward. Obviously. Oh, oh, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, it's imperative to get Joe Ledley signed up. Because he's probably the best midfielder we've got at the club. I don't think that'll be a problem because Joe Ledley really, really seems to want to stay, and I, I think I think that'll be one of our easiest uh, uh, contract the, talks the in only, long term. No, the only stumbling block there'll be his wages, because right. he was he's signed in top wages because we didn't play a transfer fee. So now when his wages are coming up, if he's on a low man Scott Brown, he's on a low man Sammy, he's on a low man. Celtic maybe say, well, we can't pay you that, we need to pay you this, and he'll be offered that for in England, so I don't know how that, how that pans out. Well, I'll be surprised, I'll be surprised if Joe Ledley does the sign a new contract, probably. Ah. You know, what I'll be saying is, I mean, obviously, if, if Ambrose moves into midfield, and that's why I'd still like to see some centre-halves, because that means we're still going to be short, because we only really have the two guys there if Big Kelvin moves. So we'll wait and see, guys, but I mean, even like the, the number two keeper, is a loose girl, and pfft, no my cup of tea at all, so we'll wait and see. But that, that's torn faced old me. But no, it's good to hear he's, he's on again on Monday night, so um, we'll, wait, we'll wait and see what uh, happens. What he's doing for the game Wednesday night? He's doing anything for it? Uh, got to go out for a few beers, mate. You in the tune watching it, mate? Oh, Queen's Park Cafe. I've got a rabble going there. Yeah, Hill Lodge, mate. The Green Mile for style. I'm not really doing there. I'm Can you just confirm there. that game's on television on Wednesday night? Aye. BBC Aye, Scotland, is. is it? I heard that. Aye. 47 Central European time we'll get in but I, I, I'll take a one nothing over there but no the, 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 the sheriff's the sheriff's long gone I was in obviously you know I've got a heat bigger than Gary Caldwell I was trying to get my cow, myself a cowboy hat for the game the other night but I, f- I failed miserably <laughs> good to hear you back on mate oh, good to hear you Tom, Tom, Tom face fucker I was just reading all that good cano stuff there earlier on anybody that's listening to the podcast will be chucking himself in a bridge now you know so, what I mean? so we've still got Joe and Johnny here they've known them so Joe What's your opinions of Celtic signings? What would you What would you like to hear? I don't know. I still think we need a midfielder. Aye. I just sit there. Aye, so aye. There's a same knock on the wheel cover, but Ledley gets injured, then you're not a brownie. Going to be injured, and then you're no cover. You know what I mean? Aye. Well, I've got a transfer rumour for you, a bit of scandal. I swear to say, actually. <laughs> right. This one's come from Jerry Gordon, parcel boy. God bless him. He was in the hoop spot after the game on Saturday and he was oh. talking to Barry Brannan, the Aston Villa midfielder. Oh, all right. And he's 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 had talks with Celtic and he's after X amount a week and Celtic's offered him about forty percent less. But he's hoping that they can come to some agreement. Huge Celtic fan and wants to come aye, to the club. Definitely is for Cole Bridge, aye. That's the, sort of, that's the sort of players we want at the club sitting in the gallery, you know, a week real, real, real hat. <laughs> so we'll get him a bucket hat, but we'll get this he's gone, you know. <laughs> So, uh, aye, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the part if you didn't come on with a rumour, mate. That's, that's what it's all about. Uh, I, hope it, I hope it is just a rumour. <laughs> oh, he's I better guess. than Kyle, wouldn't he? Come I, on, he can pass the ball fairly that's, that's not a big compliment to the boy, to he, be honest with you. He's, he's, uh, he'll no last up here. He's, he's, he's not got the physique for Scottish football. And he's maybe not the circle of pals. I don't think he's the type of player we need. Would it be Forrest, he'd Commons, he'd another tiny player in there. It's a big half of boy, you have to say, I'm sure his agent's not too happy about him discussing his wages and hoops bar either. See the one of the keys for me, especially in Europe and stuff, and big games. See we James Forrest, see if we keep him fat, he's a game changer. I know he can be very frustrating. But I just think when that boy's fit and that boy gets a run at games, when he runs at defenders, it makes things happen. Don't know about you, what do you I think? think I think it's a lot easier for him when he's got somebody like Samaras, he's got a head team. At the moment on Saturday, he didn't even leave MD. He had the Smurfs up front, I know, he was six yards, there was nobody there. I think you're right when he does run at people, it's just the amount of things he doesn't actually run at people. He comes back now and he passes it square now. When he should just ball him forward, he gets space in front of him. 
I just think if we get him and the Dutch boy fit, the two of them, see coming at both wings. I've only seen the Dutch boy for about five, eight minutes or so in Saturday and late, but it's, it seemed it, keen. It's five he's busting, he's, busting his, he's busting his ass to get in the back post. He was listening or whoever running yeah. up that right wing. He was busting his ass to get that back post. He could have scored about five. And, uh, but he was getting in the positions and uh, it was all positive for me apart from his shooting boots but uh, I, he looked apart you know he looked really good but um, I will wait and see I've, I've got I'd love to see that Finn Borgson but uh, I've been doing a lot of reading about him uh, since we were talking about it last week and I and there's still wee things coming out for him being but uh, I, I'd love to see that but, but, but Harper obviously what you're doing on the Friday night you got to see the Cordofinians when they play Dublin no, I'm not. I'm not going through till the to the Saturday lunchtime, man. Um, I'm saving for my big trip to New York. Know what I mean? So pennies are oh, tight. Charles Ch- Duffy said, "Me a Mets t-shirt. I, I wore it the other day. Orange and blue. That's always handy in the suicide, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Stay true to the orange and blue. <laughs> oh, well, I've got. A, I just got myself a sunburst at the Sinn Féin shop, which is orange and blue. So happy days. I'm taking that to City Field. Like. <laughs> Well, listen, I'm going to scoot and let you guys finish in a very professional oh, but we, we, need, we need to scoot as well. Uh, we're two and a half hours in here. All right, guys. Well, listen, uh, just for let the zone, and uh, I'll, I'll, well, I'll give you a text, Jason, if, if, you, if you want to come and see the Battle of the Pantries on Wednesday night, mate, give a wee text, pal. I'll, I'll be in the tin, mate, but if you fancy coming into the tin, you're always more than welcome. I'll True. catch up with you for a coffee in the next couple of weeks anyway. But listen, clobber, clobber alert, there's a wee bit of Paul and Sharp floating about TK Maxx in it. I loaded up yesterday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, oh, if you're near a TK Max, you want some good club or get in there, throw into some tea. There's Paul and Sharp floating about. <laughs> right, mate. All right, lads. Ta-ra. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers. Any last uh, words, Joe? Yeah, Joe, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I Joe, Can last. I see ah, Joe. Well, Joe, you you just before you, before you, whatever you want to add, what to make sure you tell everybody who's listening. Once again, how they can get in contact with the Cano Foundation, and maybe anybody who's maybe got a uh, like people that who they think might be worthy getting taken to a game. How they go about contacting you and all that kind of stuff, man. Contacting us uh, primarily through our website www.canofoundation.com. Uh, we have a Twitter and Facebook. We're on Twitter and Facebook. It's very easily found. Uh, anybody, any child group, primarily up to the age of thirteen and under. Uh, can go for free, free tickets. We've got 52 kids tickets and 8 adult tickets uh, available each week and there's still plenty, still a few games, there's still plenty of games this season to uh, get filled. So, uh, and there's no truth in the rumour that you're trying to take over section 111? No. Not at the moment, I'll never be meeting about that. I was going to get it. It's back up. If you do take it over, Joe, you can confirm there will be no lateral movement. <laughs> I can guarantee you with Declan. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, Declan, definitely. He's a wild free spirit, that boy. He'll be back uh, and stuff and everything. I know, brilliant, brilliant, man. But uh, no, it's just, as I say, it was a pleasure to be involved on Saturday. And uh, I just urge anybody that listens to us to definitely take a look at the Kano Foundation's page, see what they're all about. And there's some cracking videos on there and uh, pictures and stuff like that. And it's just amazing. But uh, Joe. Joe primarily, now the rest of the guys, is, uh, Tommy, Pat, John, Paul, Brian, he's a, and then the girls, Jillian and, you made yeah. st- Jillian and Sarah, sorry, the things you're doing there, it's absolutely brilliant, and uh, more power to you, and as I say, it's all voluntary stuff, and it's just you're doing it for... And it's any kids, it's not just selling fans, it's no, not at all. boxing clubs, anybody, I don't even in the football. Any yeah. youth organisation, just something that Community centres, right, primary schools. I'm going to have a shave and see if I can get myself in a game for free. <laughs> <laughs> right, as I say, any kids in Ireland as well. Aye, on you go, mate, carry on. Man, last year, eh, last year, last week I heard eh, Mr Donnelly on, you turned Donnelly on. Aye. Eh, I'd just like to thank everybody that attended the Vegas convention. They actually, Tom Donnelly let us have a collection. John Andrews organised a collection eh, over there at the big eh, main dinner. And we actually came away with five thousand dollars that night and there's there was just under five thousand dollars collected but the Australian boys Australian CSC were selling badges that week and they handed me three hundred odd dollars. So the probably was, I think it's five thousand one hundred and twenty dollars or something like that. I, I used to come back to Vegas which was I went on holiday and came back with all that money, do you know what I mean? 
Then I'm you went holiday again. <laughs> you should have stuck it on black, man. You should have stuck it on black. <laughs> I've seen that, aye. And it came second the other night, didn't it? Aye. 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 Oh, nightmare. But as I say, aye, fantastic. And see the generosity, especially the American clubs, you know, but half of you've been yourself at the Vegas Foundation, the uh, Vegas Convention. Yep. And the generosity of these guys giving a wee bit back, you know, and obviously they're getting a lot of pleasure out of it as well. Because if you know you've played your part and seen loads of kids of the next generation of Celtic supporters attending games, you know, it's, it's something we all want to do. And it's something we all feel passionate about. And it's, I just think it's amazing, you know, mate. I'm so humbling, man, because I'm sitting there on holiday and there's people coming up and giving you money or people try to organise collections for you and it's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. It says, it says a lot about you as well, mate, because uh, you're a total unsung hero with some of the stuff that you do with that thing. It's, uh, I'm not blowing your trumpet, but it's just, a, it's just a fact, mate, the, the, the work that you put in and uh, you're just like a sort of modern-day hero and you're mate, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not, yeah, mate. After the people there had to be in Saturday and that, some of the stuff that you did, unsung stuff that you did, you know, it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, I just think it's amazing, mate. And mere power to use. And anything we can do, or me especially, and then we can do to help, you know, we're always there, mate. And it's an absolute pleasure yeah, to have you the on. Back in, the back in the Hill, Hill Hill Media has gave us, it's been phenomenal. Especially the April, as I say, when we were struggling, really were struggling. Yeah, but it's, uh, the, the sponsor of some of the phenomenal. Oh, nice. Aye. But it's something we take great pride in doing, you know, because mm-hmm. it's like protecting the next generation of Celtic supporters, you know, and that's... Actually, actually see, did you see the kids? Did you take the game? Just the, Aye. Moment, the game kicked off, the, the camera zoomed in the UK, you know, last season they were on Aye. Jumping, and the flag was out at half-time as well. Was I had seen that. Aye. Aye. Oh, it's brilliant. Uh, absolutely, but there isn't any negatives, mate. It's all just positive. As I say, it's a lot of hard work, and it's a lot of hard work that uh, you guys put in, and a lot of people don't realise it. They just think it's, it all happens. And you keep saying like you're a rabble and stuff like that, but you actually <laughs> haven't. You know, you're, I mean, the thing you've got up and running, and it all actually happens. And what you are all about is, uh, Pat said at the meeting the other night, what you are all about is taking kids to the football. Yes. And that's what you do really well. See, yeah. see one thing as well, see about Hell Hell Media, and I think I can speak for all the shows here, I mean, this is what this is for. This is why this vehicle was put out there, for supporters groups to come on about different things, have their say, raise the money for charity. That's what it's for. It's not about me and Jason coming on and telling people what we think, it's for other people to come and use it, and I, and I, I wish more people would come on and, yes. and, and get involved, because it's there for the fans. That's what it's for, it's not for our egos or anything like that. It's, we get ridiculed but more than anything else come on use it phone in tell us what you want tell us the things you're trying to raise money for come in and use it use it because it will it will work in your favour and it's there for free I can't believe that because Skype's so easy to use that more people don't actually use it just for you know I've sat here for an hour or so but come on for 10 minutes come on for 15 minutes get involved in that conversation then just jump back out huh? yeah. Skype's so clear that and an- another thing, uh, I'll probably maybe jump the gun, but I'll say it anyway. But like, well, obviously with Chris McGuigan, uh, jump the gun. Minute, he's doing he's doing something that's just unsurpassed as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And anything relating to Celtic, these history podcasts. So check out Hail Hail Media for the history podcast. We're up to the seventies. Yes. So he's done it starting obviously for 1888, uh, the, cl- the club's founding, and then we're right up into the seventies. And he said a different guest each week. And um, I think he's recorded the 80s one. Or, uh, but has, I'm, I'm sure uh, he's recorded the 80s one and the nominated, uh, there's a nominated charity for everyone. So nobody in Hail Hail Media makes a penny for these. You know, We're looking for donations for the Celtic History podcast. And basically I'm putting my tenor in as well because yeah. the if there are 10 podcasts, everybody should put a tenor minimum in anyway because these things are it's been unsurpassed. Celtic FC have never released any good DVDs that can match this. They've, they've released some great DVDs and uh, the Celtic story and stuff like that. They've released loads of stuff that I'll treasure for the rest of my life. But this is something new. I'm learning stuff that I thought I knew everything about Celtic. And every one of these podcasts teaches me different stuff. And it's like the snippets it's got for ex-players, for fans. For, it's just absolutely brilliant. So the one for the 80s, the nominated charity is the Kano Foundation. So uh, I think No, be- I think the Kano Foundation came up already, was it? The 80s one's not being released yet. 
No, but I think Chris Tell was it was the eighties one that was going to be the Kano Foundation. Oh, was I think that? the seventies was Ski Off. Well, I thought the Kano Foundation had already come up. Sorry, maybe it's just because well, I knew it was coming up. Maybe it has come up. No, maybe know, it's just because I knew it was coming up because Chris tells but, me everything. But at the end of the day, the Kano Foundation has got to be right. one of the nominated Definitely. charities. Yeah. So what we're looking for here is, if there's, say, 10 episodes, if, but I think the target should be a 1,000 quid to each charity because, let's face it, you don't want to go to charities with 40 quid. So the downloads are unbelievable. The money's rolling in. But what we'd urge is for everybody that downloads these podcasts, stick a couple of quid in, even a pound an episode. Because Hail Hail Media charges nobody for anything. You know, it doesn't charge anybody for anything. But this is the one time the Hail Hail Media is asking for a wee bit back. But it's all going to charities. And it's all going to the nominated charities for the guests that are on each show. So at the end of the day, we're not making anything from it. It's just going to charity so that yeah. Celtic can play their part in the charitable way that the club's always been founded. And that on Saturday just showed me everything that the Celtic supporters are about. I mean, you stand there rattling a bucket and the amount of people that just automatically reach into their pocket and stick money in the bucket. You know, so they're either looking at talking, you just walk past and put money in the bucket. Aye, and it's just, well, that, that's what we're all about. You know, that's what Celtic fans are all about and we always have been all about that and we'll continue to be about that. But it's great that we can do things in like a sort of unofficial, official capacity because the Hell Hell Media were still dead unofficial. We've nothing to do with Celtic FC, but we're all Celtic supporters. I think you, know think you could do. say Chris is probably as close as you'll get to a professional podcaster because, I mean, the stuff he is putting out, the production, the production it's quality better, it's better is. Than any professional production hmm. I've listened to. But you could only dream of putting out something like that, you know. So I mean, I mean, hats off right. to Chris. As I said before, a couple of weeks ago, he's putting. You wouldn't even believe the hours and hours and David hours of his own time that's gone into this, and it's all for the love of Celtic, and it's all for today something for Celtic fans, and today something for charity. I mean, the guy, the, the boy for Celtic Underground this week, Saint Anthony. Absolutely brilliant. No, nobody knows the 70s better than St. Anthony. So get, on, get them downloaded. Go on to hailhailmedia.com. You'll see the big banner, history podcast. Go on and get the links, download them. But also find the links for the donate buttons for PayPal. And it's simple. It's PayPal. There's also there if you want to pay by credit card. As Jason says, a pound an episode, a tenner. What is it to you? For, I think we're up to 254, 255 episodes on Hail Hail Media. It's all been free. Go and stick a tenner in. Just to say thanks to all the guys for what they've done. And it's not even to give us anything else, it's to go to charity. Just get yep. it done. And see, see the thing, I've spoken to Chris as well. Hopefully at the end date there'll be a, a, a CD released or whatever. Yep. But what I would say is, is if you're listening to this, obviously your father or your grandfather probably isn't he? Because they don't know end up in computers. So what I would say to you is, see these episodes, get them downloaded on your phone, with your earphones, and go to your granddad's house and tell him to stick these earphones in and press play and I'll tell you, you'll make an old man happy right. because this stuff is it's unsurpassed as far as I'm concerned you know, it's stuff that when my dad, God rest him, he's not here any longer and he would, he would love to listen to this stuff see the stuff for the 60s and the 50s and all that when I mean, an old guy, a few old guys, God rest him are away for your bus now they used to always say when we were getting humped when the Huns were winning nine in a row eh, you used to walk in, you'd be devastated to walk back on the bus and they'd be like, oh, you never seen us in the 50s. You know, I was the man for every week. Oh, the fuck, you'd be lost to rag with them. But then you hear the podcast with the 50s, you say, bloody hell, it must have been bad. You know, be- beating the 171, it was an absolute shock because Celtic were terrible in the 50s. You know, and until Big Steen and I, even in the early 60s, we were brutal. Yeah. So, uh, aye, and then I'm just to my wife there shouting there, when is this finishing? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll need to sign off soon, boys. I could talk all night, but uh, there you go. Johnny, um, anything you want to add about the, I don't know if I'm letting the cat out of the bag, or is, uh, has there been an official announcement about the TikTok show? Uh, no, heard that, apart from what Jason told me today. No, I don't think it will be ended. I think somebody else will take over the reins for Richard. I think they've got a man, in, a man uh, ready to take his place. Okay. Uh, by, by the way, what I was going to say... So what you're saying is you're going to be a new co? New co, right. <laughs> see this uh, Ke- Kevin Doyle rumour, right? I've got to tell you one thing, Harper, right? Yeah. See, everybody I've spoke to, yeah. and I've, I, don't, I, I don't know what the guy looks like, I, I know he plays with, is it Wolves he plays with? Aye. Aye. Right, see how many watch Wolves? So I can't comment how bad or how good he is, but you're the only person 
swear to God that says that he's any good. I know that, and, and listen, <laughs> I'm not the kind of guy who, I don't like to put comment on players I've never seen, so what I will say is, I don't watch international football when it comes to Scotland really here, but I've sat through loads of Republic Island games, and I'm going to tell you something I've been saying for the last two or three years, I'd love to see Kevin Doyle on a Celtic jersey. So I can't turn around and say, no, I don't say that now because I have and I've got a couple of mates here who, who are the same. And I tell you, man, I, I think the boy's a player. I think he would rediscover himself if he got, if he got a good move. I think, he'd, I think he'd score for fun at Celtic. And I'll tell you something else. He's, the way he plays with Republic Island, he's an absolutely fantastic player for holding the ball and bringing other players in. I think he'd be fantastic in Europe for us. It's just my opinion, man. But I would I would be, honestly, I had this conversation with Jason on text a couple of weeks ago when it first came up. I would be delighted to see him in a Celtic jersey. And I know I'm sort of in the minority there because I have seen a lot of the comments on the message boards and that. But honestly... It's, it's, it's not been very good towards uh, the guy. I, no. I, I wouldn't even know him if I've seen him, to, to be perfectly honest with you. But, um, and do you know what, Johnny, do you know what? I would, I would imagine... The majority of the people, that's just the way the internet is. Uh, I, would imagine, I would imagine the majority of the people haven't seen much of them either. Uh, exactly, that's how I've, I've been. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, but that's, honestly, you're the first person that's gave the guy a, a good report that I've spoken to. Uh, and, I, and I'm speaking to a lot of Celtic fans going to the game on the bus in the pub, you know? No, honestly, I wouldn't bullshit you. I'm not the kind of guy who just goes Celtic in for a more get this guy. I genuinely is a guy who I would genuinely like to see at Celtic Park. Eh? Can I ask you a question? That's yeah. what I knew you've been talking about centre forward position. We need this one, need that one. How bad is Big Baldy? I've not even spoke about him in the <laughs> You know, I thought I was trying to avoid that, Joe. Thanks. <laughs> did you, did you, did you even mention him? I, I mentioned uh, him a couple of weeks ago. My mate, my mate reckons he's a dud. Uh, I, I'm, I'm undecided. Uh, he's not played the competitive you're, game. You're, you're and, going to be undecided. I have only seen him friendly. Totally, mate. And he, he was warming up on Saturday. And see, to be honest with you, I don't think it was the right thing to bring him on. See, with 15 to go, folk were shouting, what's this big ball they got? But the bottom line is, the crowd are starting to go and the team's back. Can you imagine if it was one each? A, a couple of chances came at him and he ballooned him or something like that. That would have been an absolute... Point. So I think Lenny done the right thing. Aye, and you, that's not the situation you want to bring a new lad in. I just think new culture, new teammates, give the boy time. Yeah, let's, I'll, aye, give, I, give. I, 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 I'll reserve my judgment on him as well. He's not had a chance, to be perfectly honest with you. I've seen him, I've seen him, um, he came on against Liftonville and Mr. Sipper. He tried to be a heater, he tried to stick it in the corner until he just put it in the net. But, um, he did, I mean, he was unlucky, he, you could see he was trying to glance it into the corner instead of just busting the net. Right. But, if that goes in, then, maybe plays the next game. So, you've got, ah, you're right, Jason, that was a bad time for him to come on and, uh, <laughs> at the weekend there because then you know what they're like there are about 30,000 in there you would like to strangle at times I know listen well, I've got to put the fit down here right the can't just go on forever I know I know I know, I know. Right. we're okay, almost guys. three years we're almost three years in right <laughs> three years I've enjoyed it I've got five six empty beers in front of me oh, I've got I've got I've got uh, five empty in front of me yeah. <laughs> Any, right, any last comments, anything you want to say or whatever, or blah, blah, blah. Nah, that's me. I'm happy. I just hope Celtic and the Green Brigade get around the table talk. I know I've seen the tweet there, a boy tweeted, they retweeted, John Paul Taylor says he's been meeting the Green Brigade regularly since the Cliftonville game, so hopefully that has been happening. And uh, I, don't, I know historically there wasn't any meetings, but hopefully since John Paul Taylor's took over, yep. he has been getting involved with the Green Bay, and by all accounts, I've never met John Paul Taylor, but all accounts, he's a lovely fella. Yeah, but uh, Jason, what's his role? What's his role with Celtic? Well, he's now the Celtic supporters liaison. Supporters oh, liaison, eh? Oh, is he? I've never so, met him. Well, you're for the Cano Foundation, <laughs> you're the main man for the Cano Foundation, so I reckon John Paul Taylor should be making contact with you, Joe. So, uh, there we go. So, as I say, well, we won't get to the... The Cano oh. Foundation is doing well just now. I'm right? sure he's got enough his plate. Aye, but the Cano Foundation is doing well just now, but the Cano Foundation is doing well off all its own... Yes, of course it is. Steam. Always, hopefully it always will. Aye, with no Please. help from Celtic. No, we need the fans. Long as the fans are behind us, we'll do okay. 
Yeah, that's yeah. it, mate, and that's the mantra. So hopefully we can pencil something in, we can get a wee bit of strategy and we can have a Kano day, just like we done on Saturday there. One yes. day a season, Kano Bigger day. Bigger and better next year. Yeah, yeah. Kano day for the kids or something. If anybody wants to come up with an idea or a name for the Kano day, send it to us and then we'll put it to the guys and we can get a, get a name for it. But hopefully we can make one day a season a day for the Kano that we can all go out with the buckets, we can get the money in there and see for that one day, that takes the pressure off, that pays for all the kids to come for the full yep. season. Yep, never beyond. Yep, and that's it mate, so nah, more power to you Joe and look forward to the rest of the season, we get involved in some various other stuff, maybe chuck ourselves out of planes and things like that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's all for a good cause. So once again, thanks very much for all your help lads, let me come on and rabble on a wee bit. Oh, any time any mate, time, any time. Right? You need, you need to maybe get Tommy on once. Tommy's done some <laughs> hero here. You need to get him on. <laughs> Tommy will need to start. He's been a fundraiser. He'll need to start coming from on it. I know, I know. So, uh, no, that's, that's me, Harper. Just Harper. Uh, one one wee thing. There's going to be a Homeboys Extra this week. Uh, myself and Scott uh, McCrory for the Temporary Stand podcast. Uh, we're going to be hooking up with Nicola Vegler, who you know very well, Jason. Yeah. Um, we're going to be doing a... a uh, as you know, probably regular listeners to the show, we've done podcasts at the New York Cosmos. Uh, we've done a couple of pods with Nick before, so they had the, the Cosmos had the first game of the season, the NASL there on Saturday, so we're going to get a catch-up with Nick and find out what the whole story with the Cosmos is and the, the Man City team that's going into New York with the Yankees. and it's, uh, it's obviously going to just be a whole thing about American soccer, but for anybody that's interested in that, that'll be coming out later in the week. Uh, we'll be recording with Nick tomorrow night, so keep an eye out for that homeboys extra. And the, will, we, the, will we get a word done with Scott? Well, I hope <laughs> not. <laughs> and the, co- the, Cosmo, the Cosmos had their first game, and they had Pele as a, a rep, obviously going back to the 70s these mm. days, and the Cosmos, and uh, they, didn't get, they didn't get the vote for the extra team in the MLS, so they're playing in the NESL, the yep. league. League below, but there is no promotion and relegation in America because it's a franchise operation. So the Cosmos uh, are basically a bit of an underground movement now, and the 12,000 they a crowd at the first game, very vociferous crowd, load of songs. If you see some YouTube videos, just can't get enough. That's what the fans were chanting. New York's green and white. New York's green and white. <laughs> so and then today, hopefully, it resonates with a load of Celtic fans, and we maybe can. As America is the corporate capital of the world, but the Cosmos are trying to buck the trend and they're going against the corporate. And hopefully the Man City, the Abu Dhabi millions and the Yankees millions, it just doesn't automatically guarantee success. And hopefully they can get a movement together that the Cosmos get the support. And uh, they get the support and the fans can then show them in New York they're no interested in this new bloody money franchise for Man City. And the Yankees that they can actually real football fans can sort of get behind them. Yeah. So listen, keep an eye out for that. That should be up on the Hillier Media by I'd say I'd be up Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. So I've just a wee text back there for some of the Green Brigade boys. So they're more than happy they're gonna come on this show within the next week. So we'll get a wee Perfect. update for the Green Brigade's perspective. And uh, we'll put it to everybody and we'll we'll do it live so we'll get calls in. Yep, perfect. So, okay. Johnny, Joe, Jason, as usual, thanks for joining me, boys, and uh, let's look forward to a good win on Wednesday night. Yep, hell, 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 guys. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. From the cradle to the grave, life is tough From the beginning to the end, the road is rough But there's something you should always keep in mind Take comfort in what comfort you can find Oh, a life without passion I couldn't bear Glasgow Celtic's my passion, I declare And for this I make no apology For it's always been Celtic it's the horses have no doubt With others it's the whiskey and the stout With some it's 
Is that- 